Good morning and welcome to day two of the Continental Tyres Schools Cup semi-finals. We're here at Osler's Field from Aylesbury Rugby Club once again and on a magnificently sunny morning, which is pretty fresh out there, to be honest with you. We have four more games across the under-15s cup and bars and it all starts in around about four minutes' time with Northampton School for Boys taking on Stowe School in the first of the two cup semi-finals. These two sides will face either Millfield or Radley, who take part in our final match of the day at 3.45 this afternoon. So if you're staying with us for the duration, we have lots of action to come. Two strong sides here, Northampton School for Boys, who have seen semi-final action before. And Let's take a look at the two sides. Northampton School for Boys first. They're coached by Daniel Hughes. Got some uh, high-end help as well from some certain Tom Wood, ex uh, Northampton Saints, and of course England as well. In the front row then for Northampton, Zane Corey Kitson, Dan Howes, and Noah James. A uh, vice captain Oliver Wood, son of Tom Wood, who's helping out with the coaching for Northampton School for Boys. He goes at seven and he's got Milo Isaac and Will Higgins. Keep an eye out for him. They reckon he plays a bit like Courtney Laws. Will Higgins at number eight today. Uh, Halfbacks, uh, Massimo Raps and Giovanni Panariello, uh, Italian. And we'll bring a bit of flair from the halfbacks, those two. And Malachi Renihan, the captain at number 13, younger brother of last year's under 15 cup winning captain so Northampton School for Boys looking for another trophy and uh, Shea line of a late change in on the right wing for an SB and for Stoke starting lineup a bit of a change to some of the numbers in the front row we have uh, George Wildblood at one Tom Idiot three and Edgero Atori that hooker for them today. Will Evans, Charlie King at six and eight with Seb Dare, the captain for Stowe. And the back three looking to ignite this very fast 4G surface. Uh, ben Shortridge, Josh Williams and Callum McIntosh. Both teams with three replacements on the bench. Stowe's director of rugby is Grant Seeley. Stowe playing in their blue and yellow hoops. Still happening to score for boys in the red and navy blue hoops. Away we go then, and it's all started by Eddie Hartigan. Wait, Red! Yeah, you're good. So, Callum McIntosh just uh, on the front run for Stowe. Well, we're going to see a first scrum of the game to Northampton. Massimo Raps at nine for them. You hear a lot of him around the park. Crouch! Five! Set! Hold now! Let it come. Use it, Red. Well, off the left boot of Panariello. Really great take that from Williams for Stowe and great chase. Collins had him covered. A bit flat for Stowe. But not up by 
the forwards and it was Charlie King who fronted that effort dink into space off the boot from Hartigan Wait. Oh, another great take from Williams he wasn't expecting it to come straight to the bread basket and Stowe back in possession There's Edie, shunted backwards. Steven now, let it come. King into contact. Stowe with the phases down the left wing, skipping inside. They might be away. Another break, and there's the tackle from Shields. Northampton on the back foot. And again, with the close drive. They get the penalty. The fact are not rolling away and they take it quickly. And that is the first score of the game. Inside three minutes. And it is the Stowe, number seven, their captain, Seb Dare. And the quick thinking from the tap penalty and set there over with the first score of the game they have started in absolute fashion here well this was the original penalty and they got it back quickly Northampton defending on their own line and taking quickly that's the step and the low drive and Northampton just caught napping slightly. But that's what you want from your captain leading from the front. Well, the conversion is unsuccessful, just pushed wide. So Northampton school for boys, nil, Stowe school five. Tory hooker for Stowe today. Well, found set there, and as they go peeling with King, and King already showing his strengths in the opening stages of this game. Big ball carrier for Stowe. there from Stowe and there's the direct running from Catley good offload on the inside here's Cloak and Cloak might be in for a second score for Stowe and it's a second try for the blue and yellows the break through the middle from Will Catley the support line for Finn Cloak and it's a great start for Stowe Northampton on the back foot once again. It was the depth from the back line and this hard running line just breaking through the first two tackles and it was all good scrum halves to just offering that support line and I think cloaks 
with the score. Eddie Hartigan with the conversion. So Northampton score for boys nil, Stowe 12. Taken by Catley again, and Catley is storming away here. Is he going to break free? Yes, he is. And Stowe, a moment of magic once again. The bounce of the ball into the hands of Will Catley, who is full of speed, full of running. And Stowe again with a third try in the opening 10 minutes. This is rampant. Well, it was a great kick and a great chase and the bounce perfect shields couldn't make a clean tackle and despite the cover coming across for Northampton that was just brilliant from Will Catley and the conversion good as well so Stowe two tries in as many minutes and they lead 19 points to nil here in Aylesbury Now this was after the catch, the cover was coming across, but he's tall, rangy and quick. Well, Catley, difficult to stop. So Northampton, who have barely been inside the Stowe half in the opening nine minutes. A chance from the scrub and wraps. We'll try and release his back to so far in the opening nine minutes. And what a nine minutes has been. They have been absolutely starved. This sometimes happens in these semi-finals. One side just taking full control in the opening stages and Raps doesn't fancy releasing his back, so goes on his own. Possession still with Northampton. There's the drive. Out the back. Cut in from Renningham. Little kick forward. Banner of yellow. Into the hands of McIntosh, who does well to break the first tackle. So looking to go through the middle, but. That's your own player. Let it come, Rats. Back foot. Back foot. Secure the breakdown and another drive from Peg. And here is Raps in some space. Looks to release Renihan and gets past one. Hard tackled by the second defender and penalty for Northampton. Oh, it's so important they just try and retain some possession here. The early start, three quick tries, 19 nil. It is not insurmountable. Well, taking at the line out Northampton and 
This is the driving mall and all good Northampton school for boys sides have had this driving mall in their locker for so many years and can they make good use of it here and he's still charging, still motoring and the crowd are enjoying this one. It's gone to ground just a metre and a half short of the try line. Release out the back, Renihan has numbers, can they use them? Shields cuts inside, goes on his own and Finley Shields with the response for Northampton. The power from the forwards, the precision from the backs and Northampton get on the score sheet. Well, that's just what they needed. Four tries in 12 minutes. This has been some start. Great ball, Shields thought about the pass out wide to Collins, but in the end, sidestepped the three covering defenders and a simple finish in the end. Now, Panariello, the fly half, just lining up for his first shot at goal. Sweetly struck and Northampton reduced the deficit. Seven points to 19. Northampton. They uh, concede the penalty from the offside as well. So Stoke with a few replacements on. Option, please. Corner. Let's go then, please. Shot called. Well, they're opting for the post sit. Keeping the scoreboard ticking over. This is smart from the young Stoke yeah. side. All good. Seb Dare, not to be involved in that decision as captain, you would expect so, but the awareness to keep the scoreboard moving and just maybe stop that Northampton momentum straight after their score. That's sweetly struck and through the uprights from Eddie Hartigan and it is Northampton 7 Stowe 22 what a game here a quarter of the way through this match Stoke receive and try and set this up inside their own half, maybe looking to release it. This is Dare again. Big box kicking. Chased by Shortridge. Northampton with their forwards now. Corey Kitson. Perhaps gets it away. Panariello through the hands to Jones who for the first time in this game really gets a carry and makes 10 metres. Wraps with the show and go again. Well read by the Stowe defence who are all over that ball and 
it is Northampton that get the penalty. Well, too eager at the breakdown from Will Catley that time. Panariello off the left boot, and I think Option. that did not quite go the distance he would have hoped, but it was curling in off his left boot. What do you, what do you want to do? His feet has gone dead over here. Yeah, okay. Okay, you got 22. Cool, line up. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, as long as you're behind this line. Yeah? Behind them, please. Well, it went off the end of the field, so it's a 22 dropout that is well charged by James, and that was messy from Charlie King, just rushed at it. And again, it was Corey Kitson with the tackle. That's an aggressive in defence here. Down the wing, Rats looking for support, cuts inside, that's a big step. Skin Dare, who was left in the dust. Now there's the charge from Howes, Northampton with some good support here. And they get the penalty for the high tackle. And Panariello this time needs to make sure it goes deep into the 22. That is great precision. Yeah. Take this edge of this line for me. Keep them on you, all right? Blue line on the AR, please. 11 back. Northampton just no, deciding their strategy, their you approach. Here comes that driving mall again, used so successfully in the build-up to that first try. This is the power of Northampton as the ball goes to ground. Still have spread the defence. With the forwards here for Northampton, almost there. The advantage just keeps coming for Northampton and Stowe need to be careful. They're coming back for this penalty. And it was just about held up by Stowe. Panariello. Into the corner again. Looking for this driving mall. from the line out then here comes that Northampton Mall and peeled away they go with Civil back in once again the backs are in there Jones is there too somehow this is still walking its way towards the try line and now are they there with Jones and that is held up I think our referee is having a word with our assistant. Okay. I'm Didn't look here. clear from here. Okay. Okay. Time off. Okay. It's no try, but blue well, we are going to go back. Take a step. We'll restart with a penalty over here. Okay. The penalty. Three penalties now against you. Two at the mall and one offside. I need this one to improve, otherwise you might lead me to another well, outcome. Still are going to have to be careful here on their own try line because that is... Okay. We're Multiple with a infringements here. in a row. Okay, to you. Okay. Uh, you have got uh, nine and they minutes. Could be creeping okay. towards a card on their own try line here. They still lead with a good, healthy 15 okay, we're points. We're starting with a penalty here. Okay. But this is 
sustained pressure for Northampton. Panarello with the nudge into the corner once again. Looking for the strength and power to find their way over. Plenty of time left in this opening half and what a long half it has been. Well taken, here comes the Moor once again. Stowe on the floor just getting in the way, that was Benji Pegg and the back's getting in there and in comes the heavy artillery with Will Higgins. The Northampton tank steamrolling towards the line, are they there this time? And yes they are, it's a second try for Northampton. And in with that driving more right, once you. again. Well, they were made to work for it. Stowe was strong in defence. And this is when they brought the big boys in. At the back and the peel away. It was Howes who got there in the end, like all good hookers off the back of a driving mall. Some game we're being treated to here. Big conversion this for Giovanni Panariello. Off the post, he struck it well. And it's Northampton school for boys, 12, Stowe, 22. Five tries so far in this half. Hampton won't have too many more opportunities. In this half, they'll have to be cutthroat if they want to try and close the scoreboard once more. From the 22 then, Panariello has numbers to his left and he looks to use them through the hands then. The fend, nicely done by Alex Collins. Come left again, Rat spots the overlap and into the hands of Collins who gets the offload inside with a bit too much force to Ben Jones. And it's out for a line out. Well, it looks like that Stowe are going to be down to 14 players. It's a high tackle, and they have been warned with the infringements Six minutes. on numerous occasions. And finally, they're penalised in Panariello with a big left boot downfield. Always tight from the left foot down the left touchline. Did well with the tight angle. forward from Milo Isaac. Panariello spots the dog leg in the defence. It was Jones that flew up for Stowe and now Northampton with the extra player. Crossfield kick and Collins is chasing after this. It might bounce just about Northampton have it. Panariello with Corey Kitson. 
steps one and gets the offload away. There's Wood. Charged up by Higgins. To head towards this near touchline and Northampton just building the phases here. Patience now as Rats releases a slow ball and Civil Bosch's board and Raps with that show and go again and a second in a row they had the numbers Northampton maybe should have looked to release. Maybe just a bit exposed here, and there's the penalty. And that was great work at the breakdown from Stoke. There's scrum half. Kluter keeping busy. And Stoke just trying to run down this sin bin clock. They have 14 players. They've done well to weather the storm of Northampton there. Particularly straight. This is well worked by Stowe. It's still going five to ten meters, and King now peels away and he's on his own and makes another ten meters. Kluter gets it to Dare. Shunted backwards by Civil. The back and through the hands with shields. Macintosh into the line. Jones tries to barge his way through. And Stowe get the penalty. So line out for Stoke, deep into Northampton territory. To the final stages of this half. With the drive now. Starting to build and when will they release? Flies out to Hartigan. Jones and now with Catley. And back again through to McIntosh. On the outside arc. Can he go all the way? Big tackle. Was it legal was the question. The advantage for Stowe. And a fourth try for Stowe. And it is the captain. Once again, Seb Dare. And all from the line out, through the hands of the backs, and into the corner. Well, it was great play, wasn't it? Just the awareness and the timing, and that offload there from Catley just gave half a meter of room to Callum McIntosh. Almost looked like he might go all the way, and it was a huge tackle from Raps. I don't think he quite knew that he was going to fly over his head. But Dare, from a metre out, will not miss. Well, 
That is the end of the first half. And what a half it has been. Six tries and 39 points. Northampton School for Boys 12, Stowe 27 at half time then. And we will be back at just a few minutes' time with the second half. But what a start. Stowe, those three tries inside five minutes. It was electric, those opening stages. But it is not over. They have done so well to ride that short period with only 14 players. But we'll be back very shortly.
Well, second 30 minutes about to get underway. It is Stowe with a very healthy lead. Northampton School for Boys will need more than two converted tries to get back in front. And they get things underway with Panera Yellow. Dare has been everywhere for Stoke in the first half of this game and back in the action from the kickoff. And that's a big boot by Catley. We saw him score from one of these in the first half. Doesn't quite get the bounce this time. Panera Yellow. It's about the boot, but down the wing. Charge from Higgins. Well, penalty for Northampton. Sides, of course, looking to get their three replacements onto the field. Make sure everybody gets a half, and let's see another one on for Stowe. They're bringing on Dan Calland, number 16. Take from Wood on the line out. In comes Higgins with the charge. Higgins with the power. And that is a great try for Northampton. What a way to start the second half. From the top of the line out, it was Wood. And then it was Higgins. And then Northampton with the power. What a way to start. Well, he's a big player, the Northampton number eight, strong ball carrier. And when he comes in at that depth with that speed, exactly what you want. Ran straight over Eddie Hartigan as if he was a speed bump. And Higgins closes the gap for Northampton. Well, energetic start to the second half, much like we saw in the first. And Giovanni Panariello, who's played all of his rugby in Italy, really. A sweet strike. And makes it another seven points. Northampton, school for boys. 19, Stowe, 27. This was the action again. Look at that depth. A great lesson for all number eights. And the leg drive at the end going virtually upright against three Stowe players. A great example. There. Tackle on Howes as Northampton look to exit. Big left boot from Panarello straight down the throat of McIntosh. It's a skip and the Bosch and just about tackled by Renihan. There once again in support with the carry. Kluter. Losing possession but Northampton were side and they've been marched back again
Well, a bit unnecessary from Northampton to just give away that position. Stowe into the corner. This area of the field is where they were pinned back for so much of that first half themselves. comes from Stoke Northampton who have used this tactic masterfully now the disruptors still with Stoke into the hands of Peg Northampton needing discipline this is a Tory with the offload ED is in support Slow ball, but out to the backs and out wide. Stepping inside and maybe just darting. It's McIntosh. Now into the hands of Hartigan. Just short. And that has been held up. Well, what defence from Northampton. The way they spread across the try line then all the way into the corner you could hear the communication and the goal line drop out underneath the sticks needs the distance that's going to fizz to Catley who couldn't wait to get his hands onto that. There's the step off the left foot and Catley towards the line for another. And it's another score for Stowe and Will Catley. Well, he is absolutely majestic with ball in hand. We saw that in the first half. And once again, with the free ball, Will Catley. Well, that's the type of broken field. The backs love to attack, and the conversion is also good. Well, the scoreboard just creeping up. 19.34. Well, the leg drive and the reach as well, just in the end to get the ball on the line before he lost control just galloped his way through that Northampton defence straight back to Catney do not give him the ball from the kickoff good chase from Northampton though Great box and straight to Shields. Saw his uh, brother play incredibly well here at Aylesbury 12 months ago in this semi final. Saw Hampton make it to Twickenham. The winners of this match will head to the Stonex Stadium, home of Saracens, on Tuesday, the 12th of March. Quick turnaround for these players. Here's Jones. Well, I mean to touch it, Jones. I have to try to. Press the edge and find a way round. Played in good spirit so far in this game. Saw some of the under-18s yesterday. A bit feistier as we get a 
an age grouper. But this has been some start here. Eight tries and we've still got 20 minutes left to play. All is not lost for Northampton, but maybe a couple of scores in close succession. Stoke. Grimble at the top of the line out for them. Get the penalty. The flag is up. So a line out for Stowe just inside their own half. Set up this monster driving. Hampton yeah, done well to stop that. And we get the scrum. Well, I've to have looked good in the periods of this game where they've managed to keep on to possession, but Stowe have had a number of moments of magic where they're just completely blitzed this Northampton defence, and that is why they are two tries up. Panarigano, the offload to Jones, that was smart. Straight out of Sonny Bill Williams' textbook. Lift it. Raps. Gets it to Shimonar. On the field, number 16 now. Isaac Shimonar. Likes to keep busy, and there's the grubber through. Bounces into the hands of Shortridge, who skips one tackle and finally brought down by Lineman. Loses possession. And Northampton. We'll have a line out. So scrum for Northampton. Good position tucked in on that far touch line. Huge drive for Northampton. Well, we'll have a reset. The reinforcements for Northampton coming in handy. Isaac Shimonar into the row alongside Will Cardo. Not now you're here, no. In the second row. Great line, and here's Jones into space. Looks to move it wide through Shields and down the left and into the corner. And there is the try. And it's Ben Jones with the fourth try for Northampton. And through the hands, that was such a great timing of the pass from Panariello. The timing of the run from Ben Jones, the delay, and it's that dog leg in the Stowe defence that opened up a huge gap. And it was a great threat of a pass from Ben Jones. Still a lot of work for Chown to do. And Ben Chown off the replacements bench onto the left wing. And ben Chown.
and Chown just closing the gap once again for Northampton. Important kick here. On the edge of the touchline for Giovanni Panarello. Didn't quite have the accuracy. So it is Northampton school for boys 24, Stowe 34. So well worked. I said, I haven't seen too much of Ben Jones in the first half. Just didn't have the option for the carry, but it was a great understanding between the Northampton 10 and 12 for that fourth try. There's the penalty for Northampton. Well, they've got a lot of support here today, Northampton. And they can use that to their advantage just to build some momentum. And it's a big, big nudge into touch. House to Wood. You can tell they've done that a few times in training. Good precision at the line out. It's an area that's worked well for them today. And Northampton just starting to suffocate so slightly here. Behaving needs to improve, otherwise, we could need another outcome. Have a word. Seb Dare. Have to have a word with his team here. 12 high. Not the first time they have been penalised, they had that yellow card in the first half. And into touch. Well, we're going to have a line-out for Northampton, some 12 metres out. Here we go then, Northampton trying to close the deficit. At the line out, Dan Howes. Wood, again, finds the mark at the line out. Here's the drive, we saw it so much in that first half and the forwards in there, Raps marshalling at the back. It's there. It's still working its way forward. They're over the line. Has the ball gone down? Well, the cheers from the players suggest it has. The referee will speak to her assistant. And it looks like it is Dan Howes standing up. You have a clear ground next? Okay. And that is a try for Northampton. And it is Dan Howes. The mall, so effective.
Well, Northampton closing the gap just over 10 minutes from time. Well, this was the momentum. Stowe were much better on this occasion. But stopping the flood, but Northampton just managed to keep walking this one forward. And the peel off over the line. I think it was the assistant referee that was nodding the head and giving the approval for that try. But it's Giovanni Panariello with a chance to convert. Just got it, trickled over. Our assistant referees had a long look, and that is a near millimetre perfect conversion to go with a near millimetre perfect try. Bundled over by Dan Howes again, a hooker's favourite, and it is Northampton School for Boys 31, Stowe 34, and to come back from what was 19-0 down at one point to be only three behind in Catley well he looked like he might have had that there but we're going to see another card here and this time it is Ejiro Atori for Stowe the number two for Stowe School their hooker, they'll have to bring on a front row replacement at some point and uh, sacrifice one of the backs. But it's another high tackle for the second time in this game. They've been sent to the bin for that. And Northampton just building some momentum, looking to make the final for a second year running. They had just over eight minutes to do it. been supported incredibly well this weekend by some of our cadets, the locals from the Ecoy Rifles in Aylesbury. They're a ball collection team this weekend. the back row Stowe to bring on Jax Fraser Allen Kluter gets it away quickly Hartigan to Shortridge who has some speed and loses the possession once again the advantage being played for Northampton here they have numbers over to the far touchline and this is Corey Kitson straightens things up wraps through the hands and stepping back with Renihan the captain and the penalty to Northampton there's been a real shift in the last 10 minutes and the consecutive tries as Stoa marched back and Seb Dare, the captain who has played wonderfully today, a real leader from the front, is having to try and just control the emotions of his team.
take the line, please.
my name's Anne. I'm Lemis. Black Girls Rock is a podcast and a bit of a collective for black women and non-binary people that play rugby. We set it up during lockdown in 2020. Started just a podcast and then it's kind of grown from that into like a rugby team. We've got like a really big group chat and just like a nice community of black women that play rugby. It's just an incredible movement that is getting a lot of traction and we're just hoping that we can spread the word as best as possible to get as many great black women involved in playing rugby. Tough game before though, so don't think you're going into an easy game. They've had time to prep, they're gassed off of a win last weekend. We need to go hard. One, two, three! LFT! It started because rugby wasn't accessible to black women and there were a lot of just prep related issues that we were finding in making the game comfortable for yeah. us. Hair was a big issue for Hair me. Hair was a huge when issue. When I first started, I didn't know yeah. what to do with that. I used to have like massive braids yeah. and then like I'd just people be pulling my hair during games. It seems like such a small thing, but it's really hard figuring out what to do with your hair as a black woman playing rugby. It's like, do I have braids? But like, will it get tugged on? Like, if I want to wear a weave, like, how, what's my leave out like? That might not make as any sense to some people, but like, it's just things that we need to th think about. And it's nice to know that I have a community of people that I can just like ask these questions to. Black Girls Rock have played a great contribution to my journey. Um, I think it's really helped me get back into rugby at times. So there's been times where I've been injured and not as motivated to continue. And with having another sisterhood or knowing there's other people similar to you that are also playing, it sort of motivates you to continue. So I think Black Girls Rock was one of my biggest motivators behind continuing playing rugby. I want to get more people involved. I want people to be like, oh, I'm going to start rugby. Let me reach out to Black Girls Rock. I want us to be a space where we can help people make the right decisions and help people feel self, safe and welcome and, and give people the experiences that we have had playing yeah. rugby as much as possible. Yeah. That's the dream. And just kind of put it on the map and yeah. show people that it, it is possible to yeah. be a part of this sport. And it's just, it's just created an incredible community. Um, of women across all abilities as well. Like we have players who are in NC3 and, and players who are playing internationally yeah. um, representing us. It's wild. <laughs> it's really crazy. I think Black Girls Rock is, you know, so, so important um, for the game, um, for inspiring young girls to get into the game, um, to just see somewhere where there's a community of people, you know, who look like you, who sound like you, who you can relate to as a young girl coming into the sport is is so important. And to have that through Black Girls Rock, not only doing a podcast that you can listen to whenever, but also now doing invitational games, going to events, um, to have that and for that to be visible, I think it's just, yeah, so important. It's great to hear women that actually go through the same experiences you do. And you have that comfort that you belong in the sport that there are others that know how you feel and what the challenges and barriers you face as well. And it's just kind of a bit of a sisterhood too. You come in knowing that you've got people there always to support and just understand you as well. So it's been great. Our WhatsApp group is a platform, a community space where we share things that are going on. It's a really great platform to share exciting things that are happening for our community. It's also like interesting like when people bring up um, something that's happened to them, like we've had people that have mentioned that like oh I had an issue with a ref and the X, XYZ happened had like a racist incident at, um, during my game and then it's like partly like the outpouring of love from everyone in support but also like a lot of other people coming forward and be like oh my god that's happened to me as well and like I also knew that wasn't okay but like had no one else to talk to and yeah. like that like kind of support system has been like really important to like build that community as well. And it's nice to know that in the future if anybody does suffer with some sort of racial attack yeah. that they will feel empowered to sign up for themselves yeah. because they have our support um, as well. 80 people that will come and fight <laughs> for them so yeah I think that's quite yeah, nice. It's, true. <laughs> it's nice to have like a community you can talk to, people that will understand how that's made you feel. Just having an area where you can actually share like even your successes in a game. Sometimes after on Sundays um, evenings we'll have someone share be like this is my first time playing for the a team I scored a try and you just feel like this like overwhelming like pride just for like this there's a group of sisters that not normally feel, feel accepted in rugby that now have a community that can share and understand like who you are what it's about and how good it is to be part of it. One of the things that actually drew me to Hackney was Black Girls Rock 
I just moved to London from Bristol and then I saw that Black Girls Rock was kind of affiliated with Hackney and rugby's always been such a big part of my life so I just thought yeah I want to play for Hackney and I want to be involved in Black Girls Rock definitely. We organised an annual tournament at our club in Hackney and we just thought it'd be nice to have a and we honestly Team. thought it was just going to be like maybe seven, ten match interested in playing in the yeah. sevens tournament. And when 20 people, 25 yeah. people 25 were interested, people were interested which and we had wild. Like fans coming as well to yeah. watch, um, I think it really brought home to us the importance of what we were doing. Yeah, it was such an amazing day because it was like we played so well, even though like we had never met each other before. Yeah. And it was really nice that like a lot of the girls were like, oh, I just don't want this day to end. Like it was just so much fun. And like, we, I don't know, just immediately had like something in common. And like, so now like post that, we're really hoping for like a big summer of doing loads of sevens tournaments and um, some friendlies, um, 15s friendlies as well. And like, we've got like 80 people in the group chat, which is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Really looking forward to a summer full of black girl magic. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Definitely inspirational, um, having different levels um, of players that were all black girls. And it was great that even if they weren't playing, they were just there to support. And just having that community was, it was really supportive. It was really great. Just keep getting more black women playing rugby all over England. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the main dream, really. All over the like, world. All over the world, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> getting more kids into rugby. I'd yeah. love to see like, like someone come up like that I've maybe coached or like a black girl that's in the Black Girls Rock group chat in like yeah. the World Cup in a couple of years. That'd be yeah. nice. Um, but I don't know. I'm just like I think we just want to keep providing opportunities to people and yeah. like yeah. just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep soaring. Keep flying. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a star in heaven that we can't reach. Okay, okay, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Black Girls Rock! Big cat. Did you did you name your animal? Did you name it? One animal that you could win at a beat of fight. I'm saying I'm saying a full full grown sheep. No, no, no. Well, I think about a goat with horns. It can't be goat horns. No. I'm having a. sauna, so we do about 12, 15 minutes in the sauna, then jump in that unheated pool out there, which is about, I was guessing, maybe 10 degrees, uh, in there for a couple of minutes, then for me, I'm back in the sauna before bed. I find if I can do a long enough sauna, it makes me real sleepy, and sleep pretty well. So yeah, and I've always had different things, get the heated pool, like this good child of voice, just have a bit of a natter, and I think it's like a good way to end the day, like you book end the day and sleep recovery and helps with your sleep and hopefully you feel a million dollars come tomorrow morning. When you run out onto the pitch with that white shirt on and the red rose and you hear that crowd roar, especially when you're at Twickenham, it makes you feel ten foot tall. Underwood, lovely pick up. First chance for him. 
What a moment for the 20-year-old Rory Underwood. My first try against France is one of my favourite tries because it was my first try for England. My third try against Argentina to get my first hat-trick. My fifth try against Fiji to get five tries in the game, which is, I think, still a joint record. Rory Underwood's fifth try for England. Being England's record try scorer is something I'm very proud of, but I recognise that it wasn't just because of me. I can only score those tries if the rest of the team do what they can do as individuals, but as collective as a team. My rugby journey in some ways started at school. The first person who had a real influence on in my career was John Oates, who was the PE teacher, who made that first suggestion. He was a very big friend after I left school and was always somebody I could go to and, and mentor in my early stages of playing rugby. first came across Rory, it must have been the late 70s, early 80s, when I joined the school looking after the sport. First impression is, uh, wow, he's quick, wow, he's balanced, wow, he can catch the ball and wow, nobody can catch him. What a character, what a player. Three main things that stuck out about him. First of all, the strength of the family, a really strong family bond. Mum from Kuala Lumpur, father from Middlesbrough, very humble, very articulate, and very hard working. Secondly, the character. Now the school here is based upon building characters and Rory is one of them. And the third thing was his absolute fantastic physical ability. During his time with England, some of the British athletics people tested him and came back as one of the people who could have really made it as a decathlete. So what a fantastic athlete he was. As time went on, you could see the development of him into a team player, but also somebody who could devastate, beat defences. He could score tries from anywhere. An incredible athlete. What a brace of tries by the flying officer. Sometimes one of the things that surprises me about my whole career of playing rugby is that during the whole of my career, it was an amateur game. So during that period, I was playing at Twickenham. I've got my 85 caps for England. I was doing that as an amateur and I had a day job. And there are still people that didn't realize that I was a pilot in the Royal Air Force. And so I flew 20 of those cameras and Cork during my time. I was in the Air Force for 18 years during the whole of my rugby career. Singing the national anthem at Twickenham before the game, the emotions were obviously high. You know, when you run out of the tunnel, you go up the, the two, three steps onto the turf at Twickenham as it was in those days, and you emerge and the, the crowd goes up. It's one of the best things I've done in my life. Wherever I go in the world, people always ask me, how's my mum? Obviously, she was picked out on the stand at Twickenham virtually every time by grandstand, seeing her two boys running around on the pitch at Twickenham. She was immensely proud mum. But for myself and Tony, it was like us playing on the garden back at home. We were just playing together in the same team. To be able to run out at Twickenham with a white shirt on the red rose together as brothers was, was a fantastic experience. Rory Underwood got piles through and scores. Without a doubt, rugby has made me into the man I am now. Go to any rugby club around the world and you just say you play rugby and they will welcome you with open arms. We are very proud of what rugby is all about, what it means all around the world, whoever you are. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody who wants to get involved in the game of rugby, please dive in wholeheartedly because you will get more out of it. Underwood's in. My wildest dreams were running around and playing rugby with mates. Did I ever think that I would play in uh, three World Cups, be leading try scorer, have 85 caps? No, not in my wildest dreams. When I started playing for England, it was a white shirt, nothing else, but the number and the red rose. So it's at its purest. And being able to play for England 85 times has been an absolute honour and uh, one I remember forever.
Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome along to the Continental Tires Schools Cup. We've got the under-15 Vars semi-final number one coming your way between Beeching Cliff School and St Albans School. Apologies for earlier on if you were with us for any technical difficulties, but it was a brilliant game, the first of the cup semi-finals between Northampton School for Boys and Stowe School. Northampton School for Boys progressing to the final at the Stone X Stadium winning 36-34 in what was uh, an exhilarating game. So hopefully more of the same. Beach and Cliff School have done well so far this year. Ten matches, winning nine, losing just the one. St Albans, a school from Hertfordshire, playing 13, winning nine and losing 14. Let's have a look at the lineups now before we get underway in the first of the Continental Tire Schools Cup Vars semi finals. Plenty of Academy boys in the Beach and Cliff School team. Bath Academy, Charlie Skelsey, Fly Half, Vice Captain, one to watch, as well as Harry Osborne, the hooker, and Theo Lewis Zidbell, the captain at number six. Coached by Jack Utton as well. St Albans, on the other hand, a side with many Sarries Academy boys. Lockie Bracken in the team as well at 10. Vice captain, son of ex England player Kieran Bracken. And Sam Penfold, an England discus thrower in at prop so I'm sure he'll be bringing plenty of strength to the team today <laughs> replacements for both sides four apiece either side be looking to utilize them off the bench as both of these sides look to progress through to the final next week, or the week after, sorry, at the Sonax Stadium. St Albans haven't had to travel too far, 30 minutes down the A41 to Aylesbury Rugby Club. As they get themselves fired up for the first of the Continental Tires Schools Cup Vars semi-finals. Well, Lockie Bracken, son of Kieran, ready to get us underway here. Saracens Academy prospect, as both his brothers are. Seems like we have a lot of sons of famous rugby players playing. We've got Lockie Bracken in this game. We had Tom Wood's son playing for Northampton School for Boys earlier on. Well, a glorious day here down at Aylesbury Rugby Club. 
windy and a bit rainy yesterday, but cold but fresh today. Durham School boys have stayed overnight, so we've got plenty of them in the crowd. Not sure who they'll be supporting today in this one. But they certainly provided a good atmosphere for their under-18s yesterday, who lost to Felstead. But here we go, ready to go now, as Lockie Bracken looks to get us underway for St Albans. Kind of scuffs it down, bouncing ball though, picked up by Beach and Cliffs number nine, Arthur Baker. Oh, and the first mistake of the day for Oli Rumian, knocks it forward. And it'll be the first scrum of the game. Beach and Cliff put in. Arthur Baker to put in. Picked up by Henry Suey. Still carrying. It's been spilled forward and St Albans come away with it. Good carry there. Great stepping by Jake Oliver. Getting the crowd up, going there. Carried forward by Henry Stapley. Garcia Guren at nine. Getting the boys going. Bracken tries to carry himself. Still going is Bracken. Good carry there by the St Albans fly half Garcia Guren to Keenan Oliver standing in dummy makes a little half metre gap there Garcia Guren to Bracken to McConnell he's dropped it and it's picked up by Jago Baker and he's going to charge all the way Jago Baker under the post for the first score of the game Jago Baker there capitalising on Hugo McConnell's mistake and waltzing under the posts for the first score of the game. As we can see here, Garcia Guren to Bracken, Bracken to McConnell, spilled forward and it bounces straight into the arms of Jago Baker to just sprint away under the posts <laughs> and Alfie Walker adds the extras a routine conversion there for Alfie Walker straight under the posts but Beach and Cliff take the early lead 7-0 up look at this by Jago Baker ball straight into his arms no one near him he won't score a much easier try than that. Come on, boys. Well, Beach and Cliff carrying hard. looking to play rather than kick but it's been intercepted and two quick tries this time by St Albans winger Oli Rumian well how about that for a response oh look at this Beach and Cliff just trying to clear their lines. Skelsey to Saunders, fizzing it out, but Rumian, a great spot. And now Bracken looking to add the extras to make it seven apiece. Which he does with ease. Well, how about that? 
two tries in quick succession from either side both capitalising on the other side's mistake and Zach Saunders here for Beach and Cliff just trying to throw a bit too long of a pass and Rumian sneaks in and dots it down well, Skelsey to get us back underway scuffs it bobbling down the restarts haven't been too clean so far in this game Garcia Guren to put it back in the pocket for Bracken he clears it up the field Walker for Beach and Cliff good step by Walker and hoisted high by Skelsey but Zellin's underneath it doesn't catch it first time but the ball goes backwards pumps the legs makes a few meters there Garcia Guren to Stapley good carry by the second row Stapley back to Bracken to send it high again this time to Hughes who drops it backwards though is the call and here goes Hughes trying to do the Sunny Bill offload out the back but the ball's loose gathered <laughs> Through the legs there by Culverhouse. The ball is still loose. Beach and Cliff cannot get this ball into the hands cleanly. And it's a great double tackle by St Albans. Number 11, William Hughes, and then number four, Sanchez Fulton. And it'll be the first line out of the game. It's Moskalenko to throw in. It's to a six man line out. Taken cleanly as St Albans look to set up them all. Moskalenko with hands on ball as they make it. Just up to the 22. Still going our St Albans. Peeling away is their number eight, Ben Zellin. Bracken tries to stab it through but it's rebounded but it's still St Albans ball Gascoigne trying to pass it off but the ball has gone forward but will come back for the penalty and I'm sure St Albans will send this one into the corner well St Albans Beat the Judd School away, 26, to progress through to the Vars semi-final. Well, Moskalenko to throw in just a few metres from the Beach and Cliff try line. Can they add a second score? Zelin has this at the back of the mall. And it's going to be advantage to St Albans for the mall taken down. Garcia Guren to Bracken. Bracken to McConnell. Double tackle Garcia Guren. No advantage as the ball's stolen. We'll come back for the penalty. looks as though it's going to be a quick tap and go here taken quickly by Stapley the second row for St Albans still going on St Albans trying to get over the line but driven back by Beach and Cliff Garcia Guren at the back now to fizz the ball out high one over the top of McCullum, but it's picked up well by Oliver Guren to Bracken goes for the high chip and chase but it's dotted down by Beeching Cliff and we're going to come back for another penalty advantage 
Bracken to put it into the corner again. They must be close to getting a penalty try here, St Albans. One more infringement from Beach and Cliff, and I'm sure the referee will be going straight under the posts. Moskalenko, and it hasn't gone cleanly. Chapman to pick it up at the base though St Albans still with possession of the ball just five metres out now Moskalenko powering through but a good tackle there by Dolby Welsh from Beach and Cliff and the counter rucks on but Garcia Guren has that at the base to Bracken he tries to go himself Guren to Oliver to Constantino, to McConnell. Guren goes round the blind side, passes the ball straight out of play. And that's good defence by Beach and Cliff, the school from Bath. They'll be very relieved at getting off lightly there, but they've still got work to do to clear their lines. Was born in the Blue Scrum Cup to throw in for Beach and Cliff. Coming away with it is Sui, powering through, and they've got numbers here to Beach and Cliff if they can use them. Jago Baker, the try scorer, and going straight through is Dolby Welsh. Hector Dolby Welsh still going, is the winger, but he spilt it forward. Well, a great little half gap he found there did Hector Dolby Welsh but he just couldn't wriggle himself free and loses the ball forward Garcia Guren for St Albans to put in just outside the St Albans defensive 22 Guren to Bracken who clears their lines only as far as Hector Dolby Walsh oh juggles the ball but he's got it in his hands now the winger he's still going as Dolby Walsh still going gets the offload off to Jago Baker William Hughes now And it's going to be a penalty to St Albans for holding on. Bracken to punt the ball downfield. What a clearance kick that is. Sending it all the way into the 22 of Beach and Cliff, giving St Albans a brilliant platform now to try and launch an attack and get their second try on the board in this Continental Tires Schools Cup Vars semi-final number one. The winner of this will play either Durham School or the Lee School. And we'll find out who that is at 2 p.m. later today as the Vars semi-final number two is straight after this. But here's St Albans go through Oliver, popping it off to Constantino haven't seen much of him so far Oliver still going as Oliver sacked down by Sui Garcia Guren has been wrapped up by Sui too and he's turned it over as well great work on the floor by Beeching Cliffs Henry Sui Charlie Skelsey to get the ball upfield and landing on top of the stand we're in. 
the big crash above our heads in the commentary box. Well, Beach and Cliff caught a final win this year against King Edward School Southampton, 17-5 away from home. Taking them to this semi-final here at Aylesbury Rugby Club. It's a good line out. Skelsey popping it off and Suey coming hard straight through. Well tackled though in the midfield by McConnell from St Albans. Baker's been wrapped up there. So Skelsey will have to act as number nine. Good carry there by Dolby Walsh. Osborne, Osborne in the blue scrum cap. Suey. Great tackle there by St Albans number eight, Ben Zellin on Suey. Balls to no one there, but picked up by Zach Saunders. And another great turnover there, this time by Lockie Bracken getting in there. And now Bracken will get a chance to send the ball upfield to give St Albans another chance of a line out. But he looks like he hasn't made touch and he hasn't. And Dolby Walsh will get a chance to run again. Offloading it to Culverhouse. To Lewis Sidbell, the captain. Skelsey, crossfield kick now. Tries to see some space and he has. Hasn't gone perhaps as far as he'd hoped though. And St Albans will get a line out just at the halfway line. Well, Beach and Cliff School have had a few notable alumni. Racing 92 winger Henry Arundel, only at this school five years ago. Ulster and Ireland player Billy Burns and ex England player Freddie Burns went to this school as well. So they've had quite a few famous rugby stars over the years. Garcia Guren to Lockie Bracken. Oliver hitting a hard line from fullback. Garcia Guren to Bracken who tries to go the other way. Sending a kick downfield. Hughes will be there for Beach and Cliff tapping it back. He goes to run now, steps the first one, steps the second one, still going is Hughes all the way up to the 10 metre line. Lewis Sidbell, the captain. To Skelsey. To Baker, the try scorer. Floats it over the top to Dolby Walsh with a bit of space to go now. Gets past the first tackler. What's he going to do now? Great tackle by Bracken. And it'll be a Beach and Cliff line out after it ricochets off the St Albans players. Beach and Cliff starting the stronger of the two sides in this Vars semi-final. Just look like they've got a bit more firepower up front. Giving their backs a good platform on which to attack. Well, Osborne to throw in now. Successful lineup now. It's at the back. Back to Osborne. To Suey. Suey's still going. Here goes Suey. He's still going. Is Suey. Five metres out now. Sanchez Fulton. He spilt the ball. Oh, what a route that from Henry Suey. Beaching Cliffs number eight. No one could stop him. Bulldozing his way through. In the second row, Sanchez Fulton just spilling it forward. His eyes lit up seeing that try line. All a bit too exciting for him and he spills the ball forward and it'll be a scrum down, St Albans ball. They'll have to clear their lines pretty sharpish now. Garcia Guren to feed at the back. 
Bracken to clear. Sends it high. Alfie Walker under the ball, gets past the first chaser. Steps to second, steps to third, still going is Alfie Walker. What a try this will be by Walker if he goes our way. Offloading off to their number seven, Casper Dolby Walsh for a try, maybe. The ref just wanting to check something here. And he's given it. Well, how about that from the fullback, Alfie Walker? Sidestepping his way to the try line. No one could stop him. And offloading it at the last minute to Casper Dolby Walsh. Well, here we go from Walker. Round the first, round the second, round the third, four, five. How many players did he beat? And then just at the last, picking the right pass. And his teammate Casper Dolby Walsh going over for the second try of Beeching Cliffs. Oof. And that hasn't gone as Alfie Walker would have wanted that kick to go. So the score will be Beeching 12. St Alban 7. Well, Lockie Bracken to get us back underway here. Sending the restart deep into the beach and cliff 22 straight to their fly half and main man Charlie Skelsey who sends it back but Jake Oliver is underneath this who puts an up and under Suey catches it and he's the last man you want to have the ball we've seen what he can do so far in this game good line speed by St Albans to get Sanchez Fulton down to the ground but Skelsey back with the ball sends it down the middle of the field and Oliver will be there passing off to Bracken who kicks early but Dolby Walsh is there well here goes Alfie Walker again but he's been sacked this time by Hugh Martin and here goes Dolby Walsh Baker Skelsey Carried forward by Thompson. Great offload there to go to Skelsey again. And here comes Sui. Sui with a bit of space. Gets the offload off to Hughes. Baker to Sui again. Still going as Sui. Takes three men to tackle him. Baker to Skelsey to Thompson. Popping off to their captain, Lewis Sidbell. What a line that was. Skelsey. Oh, and it's just been spilled by Dolby Walsh. But we'll come back. Ball lost forward. Scrum down for St Albans. But what a passage of play that was for Beach and Cliff. Really working well together as a team there to make metres up the pitch on this 4G turf at Aylesbury Rugby Club <laughs> Garcia Guren to put in <laughs> referee not happy with the set there so we'll go again Garcia Guren 
St Albans number nine to put in. And I've been told he's also a Great Britain under 15 fencer. Guren to Bracken. Not the nicest of pass, but he does well, does Bracken. He gets the ball away. But Alfie Walker, the fullback's eyes will be lighting up at this. But it's been taken there by Ollie Rumian. He's already scored one try. Can he score another? Here goes Rumian. He's trying to take on Dolby Walsh, but great covering tackle from the beach and cliff winger. It's going to be a penalty the other way, though, to St Albans. Quite clever play there by Dolby Walker. Thinking it was his penalty, taking it quick, but he's been carded. And Beach and Cliff will be down to 14 men. And a great opportunity here for St Albans to get a try back. One man extra and a line out, five metres out. Successfully gathered. And here they go, mauling their way to the try line, getting good momentum here. Oh, the school from Hertfordshire. And it's over. Not sure who's at the base of them all there. I think it was their number eight, Ben Zellin, who comes up with the ball and gets another score for St Albans in the few minutes before half time. Or oh, they've really capitalised early doors on the extra man. The first bit of play since the card. And that all came from a skewed kick from Bracken, which bounced into the hands of their winger, Oli Rumian, and who charged up the field. Defence into attack. And Bracken has the chance to take St Albans into the lead for the first time in this match. And he's got it. What a kick that was from Lockie Bracken and St Albans. And now two points in the lead. Still with an extra man to play in this game for the next remaining four or so minutes. Uskelsi gets us back underway, sending a restart high, but Benzel in the try score is right under it. Good charge there. Garcia Guren to the replacement, Noan Busak. Bracken to boot it downfield again. But Alfie Walker's under this. And we know how electric his feet can be. As again, he skips past the first, but gets tackled there by the second. Baker to Sui, who spills it, but it's gone backwards. No. It's been deemed to have gone forwards by the referee. So, it'll be a scrum down just near the halfway line for St Albans. Ah. Well, Garcia Guren, the GB fencer to put the ball in. Perhaps a future Olympian. Referee not happy with the scrums will go again. As we approach the first half whistle in the first of the Continental Tires Schools Cup under 15 Vars semi finals. A reminder that the second Vars semi-final happens after this game between the Lees School and, and Durham School, whose under-18s played yesterday, but unfortunately lost to Felstead. Walker under this. Walker passing it off 
to Hughes. Hughes still going, but a good tap tackle there by Rumian for St Albans. Baker to Sui. Sui again with the ball. What's he going to do here? Bumps one. Tries to get the ball out the back. Great pass there by Sui and another lovely offload. And Jago Baker, the try scorer of the first score, still going all the way up just short of the opposing 22. Baker to Sui again. He's having a great time. Bumps off another. Henry Sui dispatching St Albans players as captain Lewis Sidbell takes it forward inside the St Albans 22 now as Baker looks to get his players going again Skelsey goes round one Skelsey gets the offload off to Zaunders Baker great crash ball there by Thompson Baker to Lewis Sidbell the captain inches out now are beaching cliff can they get a score before the half-time whistle taken himself as baker but smashed backwards is the scrum half skelsey acting as nine floats the ball out and it's going to be a score for their winger william hughes gets the fifth try of the game and it was well deserved by beaching cliff and after Char oh, Arthur Baker gets slammed backwards Charlie Skelsey had the intelligence and nous to act as nine float the ball out to the overlap they had on the wing and William Hughes dots down in the corner Alfie Walker looking to have the extras and this will be some conversion if he gets this one good strike but unsuccessful and that's the half time whistle in this Continental Tires Schools Cup Vars semi-final number one Beach and Cliff School 17 St Irwin School 14 both sides playing for a place in the final at Stone X where they will play either the Durham School or the Lee School. And we'll be back with you in just a few minutes.
Well, Charlie Scousey for Beach and Cliff getting us back underway here. Second half of the Continental Tyre Schools Cup Vars semi final number one. Beach and Cliff 17 14 in the lead in what was a very evenly matched first half. Some exciting players for both sides here. Good running rugby, as we can see here from Scousey dodg dodging and darting through the St Albans defence but it's been lost forward there combination of both the beach and flankers Dolby Wells trying to pop it to the captain Lewis Sidbell it's been spilled forward and it'll be a scrum down St Albans ball
Zed Lynn to carry, spinning it back to Bracken, who sees a little half gap. Does Bracken try and offload it? But it's been palmed off and caught by Saunders. But he's in front of the man, so it's going to be a penalty to St Albans in a promising position here. Bracken weighing up whether, whether to go for the post or the corner. And he's going to go for a shot for goal to try and even the scores here in the Continental Tire Schools Cup Vars semi-final playing for a place at the Stone X in the final home of the Saracens of which a lot of these St Albans boys are a part of their development player programme including the man about to kick now Lockie Bracken and he's just pushed it has Bracken and Scousey will clear not too far though and St Albans will have a good line out position here in which to attract attack the beach and cliff try line Well, Moskalenko to throw in. He's been pretty accurate so far as the St Albans hooker. Moskalenko throws in. Good take there by St Albans. And it's at the back with Moskalenko. And they're looking for another maul try. They got one in the first half. Can they get a second? Beach and Cliff trying their hardest to stop this. Still alive. This rolling ball. And they might be rolling all the way to the line still going our St Albans <laughs> referee deeming no more momentum there though and it'll be a penalty to St Albans for an infringement in that mole Almost ready to get back going now. St Albans with the penalty and Bracken puts it into the corner. And Moskalenko will try to hit his man again from the line out. Galenko to throw. Hits his man. Zelin will have that at the base. Ben Zelin with his hands on the ball looking for a second more try. Still pushing. Oh, St Albans all the way to the try line all the way over and it's going to be a penalty try for St Albans and is there a card coming as well there is and a card for their captain Theo Lewis Sidbell insult to injury but St Albans won't mind that as we can see here the mall stopped again illegally. And St Albans take a 21-17 lead in this Vars semi-final. 
Moskalenko, big powerful run there. Over the halfway line goes Moskalenko. Garcia Guren to Bracken. Charging forward goes Constantino. Guren to Bracken. He wants the ball quick, does Bracken. Good counter ruck there by Beach and Cliff School. So even this game. Great hit there by Sui on Henry Stapley of St Albans. Bracken attacking the line, offloading to Michael Keenan who gets the offload. Off to Thomas Yerbury. Still going as the captain Keenan. Guren, quick ball to Penfold. Penfold off to Martin. Martin still going in the scrum cap. Martin, can he go all the way? Stop short. They need quick ball here, Dusan Albans. Zelin has spilt it forward. What a charge that was by the replacement hooker, Hugh Martin. Almost getting to the line. And then Zelin spilling it forward. And it'll be a scrum down for Beach and Cliff just in front of their own try line. Stan Burton, the replacement scrum half for Beach and Cliff in the scrum cap. Coming on at half time for Arthur Baker. Looking to control this game. Burton ready to feed. Good scrum there. Skelsey. Charge down is Skelsey. But it's been lost forward. And what an opportunity that was for St Albans, but it was lost forward by their number seven. Hillcote. Charge down was Skelsey trying to clear his lines and Hillcote just fumbling the ball over the try line. You just need to be a bit more clinical do St Albans. That's twice now they've fumbled the ball just short of the try line. Well, Martin to put in. High, that one goes from Saunders. Oliver's under it, fumbles it, but he's still got the ball alive to Zelin. Off to Bracken. And here goes Bracken, still going as Lockie Bracken. Into the 22. Garcia Guren goes onto the blind side, pass it off to Hillcoat, but he's driven back. And the ball's loose. What a tackle that was. Beltran Hillcoat sending him meters backwards and dislodging the ball. And it'll be another scrum. Here goes Garcia Guren to put in. Come on, boys. 
Bracken ready for this one and here is Bracken over to Oliver and an overlap now St Albans have as they go through Burton who passes it off to Yerbury just short of the line Garcia Guren leaving it for his forward Zelin to pick up and drive but he's been driven back here and it's lost Dolby Walsh coming away with it and offloading it on the ground popping off to Saunders Great work on the floor, that by Dolby Walsh. And Sui controlling it with his foot. And the ball's turned over. St. Ormans with an amazing chance here to score. Overlap as well. Comes Zelin. Zelin, has he got over? Wanting to go left here, St. Ormans, and driving over the line. Have they drive? Picking and going to the line eventually. And I think the man to score the try was tenfold. Well, look at the replay here. At the base, the pick and go round to the left. Tenfold darting in to score St Albans fourth try of the game. Bracken ready to add the extras. which he does not. So St Albans, 26 points to 17. Just over 15 minutes to go now in this Continental Tires Schools Cup Vars semi-final number one, playing for a place at Stonex Stadium, home of Saracens in the final, of which a lot of these St Albans boys would have played before. The Saracens... Academy charging over the ruck goes Constantino but he's bundled into touch by Sui and what a game he's had Henry Sui the big number eight he's part of the Bath DPP their developing player program and he's had some games so far a little bit quieter in the second half perhaps we haven't seen any of these bulldozing runs which he did in the first half but here he is now, and here comes one of these bulldozing runs. He's still going, is Sui. Sui offloading it, it's been dropped by Alexander Thompson. But just as I was saying, Sui's been quiet. He makes a 15-meter bulldozing break. Garcia Guren to feed. To Bracken in the pocket. Clears it upfield, just up to the 22. So Beeching Cliff, the school in Bath. Ten matches so far this year. Winning nine of them, losing one. But perhaps... Could be another loss for the school from Bath in this Bath in this game unless they score pretty soonish. Osborne to hit. Osborne to go again. Dummy straining up, but a great hit by his opposite number, Moskalenko, driving him back. Here comes Sanchez Fulton, but it's great defence by St. Albans. Some real physical, physical hits going. Here comes Lewis Sidbell. 
And now Skelsey offload out the back, keeping the ball alive. Saunders, Burton to Lewis Sidbell. Burton again to Sui. Here comes Sui, but he's been tackled. Cries of get his legs from the crowd. Dolby Welsh. Skelsey and another great tackle. St Albans fans are loving this. Every hit they're cheering. Dolby Welsh. Another good tackle. Burton. Off to Saunders. Saunders. They're trying to engineer a half gap, a half break. Sui offloading out of the back. Skelsey. Dolby Welsh to Thompson in the blue scrum cap. Thompson getting over the 22, but they're going nowhere. Beach and Cliff here haven't managed to penetrate the St Albans 22. A little chip by Skelsey and it's gathered by Dolby Walsh. And how about that for a try? Brilliant skill by Skelsey for the chip over the top to Dolby Walsh to gather and dot down under the posts and what a game we've got in our hands now as we approach the final 10 minutes brilliant chip and the bounce of the ball perfect for Dolby Welsh two players who are also in the Bath DPP Hector Dolby Welsh and Charlie Skelsey I'm sure they've linked up together there as well and a successful conversion too for Alfie Walker. Two points is the gap now. And after not being able to penetrate the St Albans defence, it needed a bit of genius like that from Skelsey couldn't seem to break through with ball in hand so a clever little chip is what was needed to send Henry Dolby Welsh over the try line and here goes Jago Baker scored the first try in this game over to the fast feet of Alfie Walker Burton to Skelsey charged down and dropped by Sui Well, 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 St Albans now in a good position inside the Beach and Cliff 22. Do the St Albans back line have up their sleeves now? Referee not happy with the set. What a contest this game's been over the first 50 minutes. Two evenly matched sides in this Vars semi-final. And it's going to be a penalty. On, what a let off that is for Beach and Cliff. St Albans had the put in, but an early push means that Charlie Skelsey has a chance to clear his lines. And he sends it up the field and onto the top of the stand with a big thud. Harry Osborne now to throw in in the blue scrum cap. I don't think he's missed one today. And he doesn't miss this time. Burton to Skelsey to Sui, the big man. Makes some metres there, does Sui. 
Burton to Skelsey to put boot to ball, sending it down all the way to Jake Oliver, who sends it back. Walker fancies himself offloading it off to Skelsey. Just approaching the halfway line, but it's going to be a penalty. St Albans have the opportunity now. As the sun shines down on Aylesbury rugby pitch. Blue skies, perfect rugby conditions. Moskalenko to throw in from the line out. Gathered in by Hillcoat. And here comes the ball. They've done well with this tactic so far in the game. St Albans getting a penalty try earlier and a try and peels off to Zelen. Zelin to Moskalenko, hit back by Sui. Great tackle there by the beach and cliff number eight. Garcia Guren to Bracken. Dummy by Bracken. And here they go through Gascoigne. Guren, but it's going to be a penalty. And another great bit of work on the floor by beach and cliff. And another let off by St Albans. But beach and cliff need to get the ball up the pitch now and capitalise on having the possession of the ball if they're to get anything from this game throw from Osborne getting the boys going Jago Baker good tackle Baker keeping the ball alive popping it to Burton Burton sending it down to Marshall Marshall getting it to the try scorer Dolby Welsh Dolby Welsh still going as Dolby Welsh over the halfway line and it's going to be a penalty Dolby Welsh wanted to take that quickly As we approach the final stages of this game, can Beach and Cliff get a score? Putting them in the lead, giving them the opportunity to play at the Stonex Stadium in two weeks' time in the Vars final. Osborne to throw in for Beach and Cliff School. taken by Dolby Welsh good drive now by Beach and Cliff coming Suey with the ball at the base Burton the replacement nine cheering his side on and they're still going Suey with that ball in his arms but it's been taken down the advantage is coming to Beach and Cliff Burton to pass the ball out to Saunders Oh, and it's a good tackle there, but the ball's still alive as Skelsey's knocked it forward and will come back for the penalty for collapsing them all. And I'm sure Beach and Cliff will be sending this into the corner to set up one of those driving malls again. Great position, the school from Bath are in now. And Skelsey dots it into the corner and Osborne will have a chance to hit his man and set up a platform for Beach and Cliff to score. Osborne haven't missed one yet. Osborne in. Hillcoat and Suey with the ball at the base. 
driving forward are they all the way to the try line is it all the way to the final and Harry Osborne or Henry Sui dots the ball down Osborne I think it was the man in the blue scrum cap has he scored the decisive try in this game which sends Beach and Cliff through to the final at Stone X great mall both sides have utilized that tactic very well in this Vars semi-final three points the difference in this match but can Alfie Walker add two more points to Beach and Cliff's lead No, he can't. The Beach and Cliff, three points their lead. Henry Sui with the ball at the base initially, but he passed it off to his hooker who was behind him, Harry Osborne, in the blue scrum cap to go over to score Beach and Cliff's fifth try of the game and the ninth try total. And they just need to keep the ball now. Keep possession for two or so more minutes. And there's Harry Osborne with the fast feet. Charlie Skelsey to punt the ball downfield. A good kick that is. Wrong footing the fullback of St Albans, Jake Oliver. But here comes Oliver, he's got Bracken outside him. Bracken, the hands and ball now, stabs it down, grubber kick. Walker, Walker stepping, he's done that perfectly all day, but he's been upended dangerously by Jake Oliver, and that will be a card, no question. Full back on full back. Beach and Cliff in a team talk, urging themselves to muster up some more energy to keep them in the lead in this game. And if the scores stay as they are, it will be Beach and Cliff, the school in the Continental Tire School Cup Vars final, playing either Durham or the Lees. And they've got an extra man now on the field as well as fullback. Jake Oliver for St Albans is in the bin for the remainder of this game. Skelsey ball in hand to pump this one downfield. Safe. Osborne, 100% record all day. Can he keep it like that? Osborne to Dolby Welsh, to Sui at the base of the mall. Osborne getting his hands on it. Declan Byrne there as well, just behind Osborne in the scrum cap. Still going, our beaching cliff. Great utilization of this rolling mall must have made 15 metres by now. Burton to get the ball back. And Dolby Walsh to scuff it out, out of the pitch. But they're in the final now, Arbitrian Cliff. 
and they've won by three points. Brilliant celebrations from the school in Bath and what an evenly matched contest that was. But it'll be Beach and Cliff, the school progressing through to the Continental Tires Schools Cup Vars final where they will face either Durham School or the Lee School and we will find out that at 2 p.m. later today.
And my name's Anne. I'm Lemis. Black Girls Rock is a podcast and a bit of a collective for black women and non-binary people that play rugby. And we set it up during lockdown in 2020. Started just a podcast and then it's kind of grown from that into like a rugby team. We've got like a really big group chat and just like a nice community of black women that play rugby. It's just an incredible movement that is getting a lot of traction and we're just hoping that we can spread the word as best as possible to get as many great black women involved in playing rugby. It was a tough game before though, so don't think you're going into an easy game. They've had time to prep, they're gassed off of a win last weekend. We need to go hard. One, two, three! LMG! It started because rugby wasn't accessible to black women and there were a lot of just prep related issues that we were finding in making the game comfortable for yeah. us. Hair was a big issue for Hair me. Hair was a huge when issue. When I first started, I didn't know what to do with that. I used to have like massive braids. Yeah. And then like, I'd just people be pulling my hair during games. It seems like such a small thing, but it's really hard figuring out what to do with your hair as a black woman playing rugby. It's like, do I have braids? But like, will it get tugged on? Like, if I want to wear a weave, like, what's my leave out like? That might not make as any sense to some people, but like, it's just things that we need to th think about. And it's nice to know that I have a community of people that I can just like ask these questions to. Black Girls Rock have played a great contribution to my journey. Um, I think it's really helped me get back into rugby at times. So there's been times where I've been injured and not as motivated to continue. And with having another sisterhood or knowing there's other people similar to you that are also playing, it sort of motivates you to continue. So I think Black Girls Rock was one of my biggest motivators behind continuing playing rugby. I want to get more people involved. I want people to be like, oh, I'm going to start rugby. Let me reach out to Black Girls Rock. I want us to be a space where we can help people make the right decisions and help people feel self safe and welcome and, and give people the experiences that we have had playing yeah. rugby as much as possible. Yeah. That's the dream. And just kind of put it on the map and yeah. show people that it, it is possible to yeah. be a part of this sport. And it's just, it's just created an incredible community um, of women across all abilities as well. Like we have players who are in NC3 and, and players who are playing internationally yeah. um, representing us. It's wild. <laughs> it's really crazy. I think Black Girls Rock is, you know, so, so important um, for the game, um, for inspiring young girls to get into the game, um, to just see somewhere where there's a community of people, you know, who look like you, who sound like you, who you can relate to as a young girl coming into the sport is, is so important. And to have that through Black Girls Rock, not only doing a podcast that you can listen to whenever, but also now doing invitational games, going to events. Um, to have that and for that to be visible, I think it's just, yeah, so important. It's great to hear women that actually go through the same experiences you do and you have that comfort that you belong in the sport, that there are others that know how you feel and what the challenges and barriers you face as well. And it's just kind of a bit of a sisterhood too. You come in knowing that you've got people there always to support and just understand you as well. So it's been great. Our WhatsApp group is a platform, a community space where we share things that are going on. It's a really great platform to share exciting things that are happening for our community. It's also like interesting like when people bring up um, something that's happened to them. like we've had people that have mentioned that like, oh, I had an issue with a ref and the X, XYZ happened, had like a racist incident at, um, during my game. And then it's like partly like the outpouring of love from everyone in support, but also like, a lot of other people coming forward and be like oh my god that's happened to me as well and like i also knew that wasn't okay but like had no one else to talk to and yeah. like that like kind of support system has been like really important to like build that community as well and it's nice to know that in the future if anybody does suffer with some sort of racial attack yeah. that they will feel empowered to sign up for themselves yeah. because they have our support um as There's well 80 people that will come and fight <laughs> for them so yeah i think that's quite yeah, nice that's true. <laughs> It's nice to have like a community you can talk to, people that will understand how that's made you feel. Just having an area where you can actually share, like even your successes in a game. Sometimes after on Sundays um, evenings, we'll have someone share, but, like this is my first time playing for the team, I scored a try. And you just feel like this like overwhelming like pride just for like this, there's a group of sisters that not normally feel, feel accepted in rugby, that now have a community that can share and understand like who you are, what it's about and how good it is to be part of it. One of the things that actually drew me to Hackney was Black Girls Rock. 
I just moved to London from Bristol and then I saw that Black Girls Rock was kind of affiliated with Hackney and rugby's always been such a big part of my life so I just thought yeah I want to play for Hackney and I want to be involved in Black Girls Rock definitely. We organise an annual tournament at our club in Hackney and we just thought it'd be nice to have a And we honestly team. thought it was just going to be like maybe seven, ten max interested in playing in the yeah. sevens tournament and when 20 people, 25 yeah. people 25 were interested, people were interested which and we is had wild. Like fans coming as well to yeah. watch, um, I think it really brought home to us the importance of what we were doing. Yeah, it was such an amazing day because it was like we played so well, even though like we had never met each other before. And it was really nice that like a lot of the girls are like, oh, I just don't want this day to end. Like it was just so much fun. And like, we, I don't know, just immediately had like something in common. And like, so now like post that, we're really hoping for like a big summer of doing loads of sevens tournaments and um, some friendlies, um, 15s friendlies as well. And like, we've got like 80 people in the group chat, which is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Really looking forward to a summer full of black girl magic. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Definitely inspirational, um, having different levels um, of players that were all black girls. And it was great that even if they weren't playing, they were just there to support. And just having that community was, it was really supportive. It was really great. Just keep getting more black women playing rugby all over England. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the main dream, really. All over the like, world. All over the world, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> getting more kids into rugby. I'd yeah. love to see like, like someone come up like that I've maybe coached or like a black girl that's in the Black Girls Rock group chat in like the World Cup in a couple of years. That'd be yeah. nice. Um, but I don't know. I'm just like, I think we just want to keep providing opportunities to people and yeah. like, yeah. just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep soaring. Keep flying. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a star in heaven that we can't reach. Okay, okay, we got it. <laughs> Black Girls Rock! Big cat. Did you did you name your animal? Is there yeah, yeah. one animal that you teach could win at a beat of fight? I'm saying I'm saying a full full grown sheep. No, no, no. I think about a goat with horns. It can't be goat horns. No. I'm having a sauna, so if we do about 12, 15 minutes in the sauna, then drop in that unheated pool out there, which is about, I was guessing, maybe 10 degrees, uh, in there for a couple of minutes, then for me, I'm back in the sauna before bed. I find if I can do a long enough sauna, it makes me real sleepy and sleep pretty well. So yeah, and I've always had different things to get a heated pool, like this good child voice, just have a bit of a natter, and I think mean, like, a good way to end the day, like you book end the day and sleep recovery and helps you to sleep and hopefully you feel a million dollars come tomorrow morning. When you run out onto the pitch with that white shirt on and the red rose and you hear that crowd roar, especially when you're at Twickenham, it makes you feel 10 foot tall. Underwood, lovely pick up. First chance for him. 
What a moment for the 20-year-old Rory Underwood. My first try against France is one of my favourite tries because it was my first try for England. My third try against Argentina to get my first hat-trick. My fifth try against Fiji to get five tries in the game, which is something that's still a joint record. Rory Underwood's fifth try for England. Being England's record try scorer is something I'm very proud of, but I recognise that it wasn't just because of me. I can only score those tries if the rest of the team do what they can do as individuals, but as collective as a team. My rugby journey in some ways started at school. The first person who had a real influence on my career was John Oates, who was the PE teacher, who made that first suggestion. He was a very big friend after I left school and was always somebody I could go to and, and mentor in my early stages of playing rugby. I first came across Rory, it must have been the late 70s, early 80s, when I joined the school looking after the sport. First impression is, uh, wow, he's quick, wow, he's balanced, wow, he can catch the ball and wow, nobody can catch him. What a character, what a player. Three main things that stuck out about him. First of all, the strength of the family, a really strong family bond. Mum from Kuala Lumpur, father from Middlesbrough, very humble, very articulate and very hardworking. Secondly, the character. Now the school here is based upon building characters, and Rory is one of them. And the third thing was his absolute fantastic physical ability. During his time with England, some of the British athletics people tested him and came back as one of the people who could have really made it as a decathlete. So what a fantastic athlete he was. As time went on, you could see the development of him into a team player, but also somebody who could devastate, beat defences. He could score tries from anywhere. An incredible athlete. What a brace of tries by the flying officer. Sometimes one of the things that surprises me about my whole career of playing rugby is that during the whole of my career, it was an amateur game. So during that period, I was playing at Twickenham. I've got my 85 caps for England. I was doing that as an amateur and I had a day job. And there are still people that didn't realize that I was a pilot in the Royal Air Force. And so I flew 20 days to Canberra's in Cork during my time. I was in the Air Force for 18 years during the whole of my rugby career. Singing the national anthem at Twickenham before the game, the emotions were obviously high. You know, when you run out of the tunnel, you go up the, the two, three steps onto the turf at Twickenham as it was in those days, and you emerge and the, the crowd goes up. It's one of the best things I've done in my life. Wherever I go in the world, people always ask me, how's my mum? Obviously, she was picked out on the stand at Twickenham virtually every time by grandstand, seeing her two boys running around on the pitch at Twickenham. She was an immensely proud mum. But for myself and Tony, it was like us playing on the garden back at home. We were just playing together in the same team. To be able to run out at Twickenham with a white shirt on the red rose together as brothers was, was a fantastic experience. Rory Underwood compiles through and scores. Without a doubt, rugby has made me into the man I am now. Go to any rugby club around the world and you just say you play rugby and they will welcome you with open arms. We are very proud of what rugby is all about, what it means all around the world, whoever you are. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody who wants to get involved in the game of rugby, please dive in wholeheartedly because you will get more out of it. Underwood's in. My wildest dreams were running around and playing rugby with mates. Did I ever think that I would play in uh, three World Cups, be leading try scorer, have 85 caps? No, not in my wildest dreams. When I started playing for England, it was a white shirt, nothing else but the number and the red rose. So it's at its purest. And being able to play for England 85 times has been an absolute honour and uh, one I remember forever.
Well, welcome back to the Continental Tyre Schools Cup. We have the second of the under-15 Vars semi-finals coming up for you in just a minute. It is Durham against the Lees School. And Durham, who have had a real weekend of it down here in the Vale of Aylesbury. They're under-18s, losing yesterday to Felstead. And we've got a few still here watching. They'll be looking to try and take victory and send them selves to the Stonex Stadium in around nine days time I think it is last game was Beeching Cliff Beeching Cliff against St Albans uh, just wrapped up a few minutes ago and it was Beeching Cliff with that late score which took the win for them in 29 to 26 
Well, here they are in the dark blue and the white Durham. Different strip than their first 15 were playing in yesterday, which was green and white. And in the light blue, the Leeds school, coached by James Clark. And they are here. Ready and waiting. Well, what a momentous occasion. Durham score. Their captain, Rowan Bainbridge, playing at number three today for them in the front row, keeping busy. The Lees had a good chat with them in the uh, second game today. They were just sat here watching, potentially trying to scout out who they thought would make the final. And uh, they were trying to judge the two teams. Well, big occasion. It's Durham that take to the tee, the field first. The lays here. This is the side. Uh, Clinton Cheng, vice captain for them. Dan Russell at fullback, the starting captain, and kicking things off for Durham. Daniel Cassap at inside centre. So he goes Ready, first. It's uh, a busy day here at Aylesbury, but just about bouncing out from the kickoff. Dan Cassap. So it's going to be a line out to the Lees Take your own gap as to we start said things before. off. There you are. <laughs> Guys, just take a step, please, on the AR. So, first opportunity for Nico Clark. Back. Big boot for them downfield, and now in some broken field through the hands of. Kassap, nicely wrapped up by Nichols. Charge through the middle, that's a good run from Meek. All the intensity you would expect of a school semi-final. Let's cut back inside. And a barnstorming run and Durham, cheered on by the huge support they have here. This is Basti. Now, down the wing, through the hands, Kassap with the big fend. Always showing his worth, the Durham number 12, and charging up again, Basti. Oh, just losing possession is Rowan Bainbridge, the captain, and the energetic start ends with a scrum for the Lees in front of their own posts. Scott Powell, head of rugby for Durham School, they're under Ready? 15s. Crouch. Bind. Set. Keep your shoulder through. Stay nice and square. Find the gap and we'll be fine. Crouch. Bind. Set. Hold the shove. Well away from the base. Davis gets it away and here's the speed at the back door pass from Ralston Bone. And on to watch for the Lees. 
no clear release. Give away the penalty. Seven Durham. No clear release. Tobias Huntley, the one penalised. Just about kept in field by Tom Ray. Back forward oh. by Saxton and on. bouncing off the foot. But it did come off a hand for Hugo Ivanusi. And he gives away the scrum to Lads, Durham to and the Leeds yet to get out of their own half. Only almost four minutes played. Crouch. Bind. Set. Cassat with the fumble, lost forward. So, First lock on by scrum Durham. now to and by Lees. the Lees. Scrum, Lees ball. Crouch. Bind. Stand up. We need to be closer on this side. Oh, Keep that scrum. shoulder through. Just having a word Wait with the set call before we jump. Release from Rodavi Chukwu. Thank you. And Nico Clark. Crouch. Bind. Set. Mike Davis. Just straight out of the tunnel. Same Feeds scrum. the scrum for the first time. Shot through way past Nico Clark at hooker. So, no scores yet. We saw Crouch. two fantastic games in the opening Bye. fixtures. The first of the day, Northampton School for Boys Set. winning with what was almost the final play of the day. Early. And Early. Get the free kick. So the Lees. What they fancy here. Can't kick it straight out. Can't kick it touch straight they won't out. Get the line out. So huh? they're looking for the... Scrum call. For the bench to give them some ideas. So they're going to take the scrum. The mark too early, just hold the shot. Chance to just retain Thank some possession for the first time. Just step up, step up, Durham, please. Just step up, please. Crouch, bind, set. Ready, ready, ready. Well, at the back of the scrum and pounced upon by Durham. It's been knocked on in the process. So here with the Lees again, a third consecutive scrum. What will they muster here? Despite these frantic start from the previous two games, Crouch. this one just still in its shell slightly. Set. No! Off the base from Ibenusi. Hands away, Durham! First chance to see all of his power. He's an under 14 playing for this under 15 side, so we'll hopefully see him in 12 months. Off the boot of Alexander, which is charged down and well collected. Swan rampaging. No, 15. No, don't go there! Release six. Wider, wider. Still walking this one forward. All the bodies in there and the Lees can't quite confuse things at the moment. Here now with Peterson. It's a contact and Lees 
really trying to attack these breakdowns and force the slow ball or infringement. In again with the power from Swan. Just edging closer, here is Meek. Gets the offload to Peterson. And it's a penalty to Durham. Stir it properly from the mark, please. Taking quickly, but we're going to come back. 12 leads, side entry. Well, they have suffocated the leads so far. Onside, please. Two sides from opposite ends of the country. This is a quick tap and a charge, and it's a score for Durham. And they take first blood in this semi final. Quick reactions, all speed, and. That's fine, there's a physio. We'll come. Harry Ashcroft looks to be down for the Lees. But Durham, with the power. Well, Dan Kassa, the inside centre who has looked solid in this game already with the try. And six metres out, the Lees defence caught napping. And all power from Dan Kassa. Conversion is good as well. Holly Jackson makes it seven. And you can see that Harry Ashcroft was just getting some treatment by the post. We're not going to be able to restart this game until he's off the field of play. And he looks to be in some discomfort whilst he went in for that tackle with Dan Kassap. Just caused some trouble for himself. it again good score solid score and all that pressure pinning the Lees back in their own half Lees there's no rush we can't play when he's on the pitch and in the end it's Durham who lead and we've had such great support in Aylesbury this weekend. This pitch they refurbished a few years ago to make it an artificial 4G surface, which allows these eight games to be played on two consecutive days, something that wouldn't have been possible okay. without Ready? support. We sub on? And we're, of course, very grateful to yeah. have right. Continental yeah. Tyres supporting this year's Schools Cup. Continental Tyres here in Aylesbury as well with their partnership with QuickFit providing free tyre checks and Noah Wong is onto the field Whenever you're ready. for Harry Ashcroft. Time the Lees have made it into the Durham half. Now trying to battle back with Dan Russell, the captain at fullback. Makes it over that elusive halfway line. And there was the charge from Wong. Pop defence on Daniel Dobbin. Alexander. Out to Ralston Bone. Wong. Plays his club rugby in Singapore. There's no Wong as Ralston Bone charges forward. One of the 
sides to players of the year recently nominated and Mark's here. No clear release. Davis needs to just bide his time slightly was trying to take it around eight meters away from the mark to the corner then the leads just slowly working their way downfield need to try and build some form of strength in this game so far just struggled to get a foothold in it that's the middle here all in the line out then at the back with Ibanusi maybe just a steal there from Will Wood playing penalty advantage Lees he's managed to secure it for now and in with Robin Red good chat with him earlier on too is Chukwu who uses that power to drive forwards and the Lees rewarded with a penalty ball was formed side entry Take the line, please. Right, another line out this time, a bit closer to the try line. Yeah, on the line. How many? All in. Opportunity beckons in. for the Lee's school. From Cambridge today. They're on the line, take your own gap. Ball. The back. Ball is over. seat. On the mall as Davis looks to release and cuts through. Big tackle on him, just a meter short. Chukwu has a go. Away into the hands of Cheng. Shunted backwards. The Lees driving forwards again. Out with the backs and Roston Bone on the outside arc. And Roston Bone takes three to bring him down. Durham steal the possession and away go Durham out of their own 22 Advantage that was Caden Peterson back towards contact inside and that is a huge huge boot to clear it out of the 22 and Durham with some strong defence will be able to breathe Thank you. Well, tough on the lees all that work can quite find a finishing touch James Roston bone who came close how many please Lees? all in from Ralston Bone did well to cause an upset at that line out and they are tearing after this and Bone after it again and he's blocked whilst chasing after it or was it just a accidental back on their own line now Durham defending for their lives and it's a real scrap an absolute mess and it's the Lees with a penalty hold on Six storm hands in. Well, it's Wood who has been penalised. When you're ready, yeah. Stripped. Over the top, and that's taken been back. fumbled. And it was stripped but taken back. Scrub. Well, it's going to be a scrum. Well, the Lees, fortunate. Perhaps there. Time off, subs. We've got a replacement coming on. We're going to see Isaac Atkinson and Simon Graham for Durham. Big moment for Durham. 
in front of the posts. Crouch! Bind! Set. Ibanusi tries to go on his own, carrying two. Is he over? It's held up. And good effort from the Durham defence. Took two to stop him. This is the carry, and Durham needed the bodies underneath. Drop out and just on the 22. And this is yeah. unfortunate for Nichols. Knock on, and then he's offside. Penalty back 10, please. He's lost forward, and then offside. Oh, penalty for the offside. Good nudge downfield. Man. Yeah, keep them all on that line, please. How many? Five. No, I'm the middle, so come forward a bit. There you go. So, yeah. Back to you guys if you're not in. Thank you. Far touch line with the line out. Finds the mark. Stepping from Kassap. First and opening score. Here's Bainbridge. Release lead. That's advantage. Let it come, Durham. Play the ball. Play the ball. It's there. Charge through the middle. Here goes Swan on the outside. Brushes past Russell and Swan. For a second score for Durham. What a run for the Durham number eight. That was a huge run. The big fend on Dan Russell. And Durham get the second score. Direct line, wasn't it? Through the middle. That outside break and ball was in the wrong arm, but he still managed to get the fend away. And Joe Swan with a great surge. A chance now for Durham to extend their lead to 14 points. Inside the opening 20 minutes. Oh, Oliver Jackson with the conversion. And he struck it nice and true. This was the line again from Swan. Just caught Dan Russell a bit flat footed and hard to stop a number eight when they're running like that. Nichols. So much energy and power. To keep possession on the Lee's 10 meter line. Drive forward. this near touch line and Patterson just loses it. Here we 
we go again with the leads on the charge of their own. Minusi. We'll take the scrub. Crouch. Good field position inside their own half. Bind! Set! Big shot from Durham, but away it goes for the Lees and Ralston bound Scott to the hands two. of Russell and Peterson. Can't pick up the loose ball. First by Lees, then by Durham. Scrum. It's a scrum once again. One of them forced handling errors in this game. Happens when the stakes are high. He's chasing this one. Crouch. Bye. Scrum for Durham. Set. It's Scrimger. Nine for them. And that's much better hit from the Lees and spills out the back. Just about with Durham still. Just a bone flying up in defence, but still with Durham. Kassap drives forward. Down the wing. Flying. Backwards. All backwards. That was Swan again. Here we go with David Chukwu. The Lees prop striding away. Can he turn on the afterburners? Does well to cut back inside and just hold up to get some support. The Lees on his shoulder now. Up to the Durham 22. No hands now. Shoving them backwards. A little bit flat and a bit passive, but Austin Bone has power and speed in abundance and the offload straight to Durham. He tried to keep it alive, but he gave it to the wrong team. And Saxton. Kick out of the 22. That will bounce nicely into touch, and it was carried in by Wilkie Nichols. Yeah, agreed. And he should have just let that roll on to touch. It was an error, really. How many, please? Five. 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 Wood from the top of the line out here's Swan. Big fend again. Looking good. And he's down the blind side. I think the gum shield managed to come out as well, but it's gone forward. Towers above the rest of his teammates. Three. Crouch. Bind. Set. To try and create something. Booted onward. And after this 
is being sought out. He's back again looking for another tackle. So much space in this game. Easy. pocket and send that downfield to Russell and the captain now gets a chance to do the things he's really good at and he's head first into Peterson no, 12. pushing up to you. halfway again now Davis Got numbers over if they could put it through the hands and here goes Robin Red. Still the numbers to the far touchline. And Chukwu, who had that big break earlier on. This is Russell now. Cuts through, and Russell has space on his left. And the pass, well blocked. That was fantastic from Saxton. And still going forward, Lees. Just in the tackle, lost forward. Well, it was not forward in the tackle, but Dan Russell just tried to delay the pass. and. Couldn't put away Wilkie Nichols. Time off. It was superb defence from the Durham fullback Lewis Saxton. You had an advantage and played through. Well, he took an absolute whack. Hello. Peterson Happy. to get back to his feet. Yeah. Time on. Sweet water break. Scrum with the Lees. Haven't found their way onto the score sheet yet as we approach half time. Crouch. Bind. Set. The back and whipped away, Davis. Through Alexander and now Roster bound with that show and go and tries to find a gap on the outside. Scored over 200 points this year. James Ralston Bone. The lead's number 12 and a quickly taken and in there you go with a first try through Ben Sortel. Durham caught napping. It's the try this time for the Leeds. Half time for me. And it was a great break. Time. Just on the cusp of half time, absolutely when they needed it. Well, this was the initial break from Ralston Bone. Had some numbers, chose not to use them, and got the penalty, which was taken quickly from Ed Alexander. And it was great smarts by the Lees fly half. Well, they have closed the gap. The conversion was good from James Ralston Bone. And it is Durham 14. The Lees scores seven at half time. And despite the early dominance from Durham, that late score really puts the Lees back into contention. The first try from Durham's number 12, Dan Kassa. Two inside centres playing incredibly well. well 
this is the second try an absolute peach from Joe Swan who straightened the line went on the outside arc and just put all the power in They tried just before half time from the Lees off the scrum and show and go from Ralston Bone. Infringement at the breakdown, giving them the penalty, and it was taken quickly by Ed Alexander, who is described by his coach as cool, calm, and measured. And that was as he fed the pass to Ben Sortle to close the gap to seven points at half time. This is Durham, and we are delighted to have been joined by current England players Theo Dan, and Charlie Yules, who are having a word with the guys in the huddle, and that is Charlie Yules and James Haskell there as well. We're joined by the Good Bad and the Rugby podcast today. It's pain here as well, and they might tiddle, unfortunately, but they have been in the dugout for this match. Charlie Yule's just parting some expert knowledge as well. Charlie Yules and Tommy Freeman as well. You can just see to the right of picture. Theo Down with his back to us between the number 13 and 12. And Durham leading, looking for a chance to play at the Stonex Stadium. They all face Beach and Cliff, and Lee's getting some final words of encouragement as well. James Roston Bone gets us back underway, and that's a, a knock on from the restart. Yeah. Both teams using the half time as an opportunity to change some players and ensure everybody gets a half. Set. Here we go, I've been 
BC off the base of the scrum. Get to see offload there, a bounce to Roston Bone, and down the right wing they go now. Sort out, who got that try. Trying to inject some life in. Agreed. Alexander, a bit flat and lateral from Belize. Advances, Have the advantage, and Alexander kicks it over to the corner, and tearing after this is Chimugu. Just rolls off the end of the pitch. But we're coming back for the penalty. One, never on side. No. Did you like it? Shot. Go. <laughs> well, Belize taking the opportunity to grab the points. We're going for sticks now. Yeah. One. Thank you. So, Ralston Bone. 24 tries this year in 13 games. He's already got two points from the conversion. Straight between the sticks. what Ralston Bowen was hoping for but he's pushed it wide and 22 hold on 22 got to be behind the line for Durham. Start, they've got to be behind you just start behind the line start behind the line this opportunity missed for the Lees when you're ready Scuffed a bit by Kassap and Belize with a chance to keep going forward through Ivanusi again. He's so strong and powerful. With Dobbin over the 22 metre line and Belize building momentum. Nichols. Again. Tackle Russell release! There. Change of direction Easy. and Russell just breaking round at scrum half now and that's a great solo score for the captain. Now in it's scrum half, moved up from fullback and peeled round the breakdown, brushing off one tackle and managing to reach the line. Great response for the Lees. 14 0 down. And now with a chance to level it. Great speed. Yeah, pumping those legs, driving towards the line. And now James Roston Bone with a chance to add the extras. and make it level if you're just joining us this is the continental tires schools vars under 15 semi-final the winner of this match will play beaching cliff at the stone x stadium austin bound this time does not miss all level once again it's durham 14 the lee school 14 when you're ready, yeah. Great individual brilliance. It's got ten for me. Oh, what a take that was. Chakwu and Meek driving forward for Durham. Through the hands quickly, Kassap show and go and forward. Please get the penalty. Well, they were calling for it. They were trying to get it out of the ruck and couldn't do so. Yeah. 
the edge of the line. How many, please, Luz? Four. Four. You got five. One needs to go. One needs to go. Thank you. Lees, Lees, come across. There you go. Perfect. There you go. So the Lees with Nico Clark. Okay. Taking it on Benussi now. Powers forward with the big fend. Next 15 metres. Still by Achimugu. Thought it went backwards and showed his wheels. He's so quick. Only learnt to play rugby in the last 12 months. Mansur Achimugu, which is great to see him here in this semi final. Just step up, please. Thank you. Crouch. Bind. Set. Wait, nine. Released and Kassap. Wait, wait three or something. It's good distance with that kick. Come on, stabbed at it. And we'll take the line. Paid off. So line up. How many, please? All in. That's you. Yeah? Yeah, perfect. Guys, take a step. Oh. Lees, picking up the loose ball. Still keep going until the whistle is blown and it's going to be a scrum. 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 Just come up, come up. Thank you. Crouch. Bind. So Durham. First chance in this set. Second half for them inside the knees. Territory. Off the base. It's the juggernaut. It's Swan. Scrum advantage. Peterson again. Play. Fumble. A few times for both sides in this game. Ivan Usi sees the space around the breakdown and attacks with intent. He's legal. We'll come back for the knock on. Scrum release ball. Again, another whistle. You're on the other way and it'll work. Just go underneath. This game perhaps so lacking the yeah, I know it is. same fluidity that we saw in the opening two fixtures today. His arm goes over the top of yours and then it'll work nicely. All right. Crouch! Bind! There we go. Set! Ready. Ah! Platform from the scrum. Russell gets it to Alexander and sort out. Tries to drive up and Kassap no eventually storm. takes him to ground. Good protection for Russell at the breakdown there. to just about hold on to it. Just the bone ships it out wide. With RC1. We'll take the scrum. Scrum, don't ball. Well, you can feel this Same game is on the knife good. edge. Yeah. Crouch! Set. Yes. 
through the hands. Kassa at the back door and Peterson had numbers over but not enough room to no get hands. the pass away. Well to draw it out the back with Meek and that was smart. This side can't hold on to it. In. Away goes Dobbin. Advantage over. Loose and here we go with Nichols and Nichols speeding away, just about in play. And in the end, Achimugu barged into touch. Yeah, I will. Durham ball. If you get involved after the ball's dead, then I'll have to stop getting involved. Just take a breather. Stop getting involved after the ball. Right, here you are. Lead on me. How many of you? Five. You've got to give them a chance, though. Balling this one, driving this one. Looking to try and find something here. Once scored since the end of 20 minutes. This is a great break now. Good offload away. Kassap, of course, it's Kassap there again. He needs support. Now it comes away quickly. Cutting back with Saxton. Easy. Bainbridge bullies it forward. The knees are all a bit loose in defence. Vintage coming here for Durham. Take a step! Take a step! Don't just press in here. And he's uh, We're going trying nowhere. at the breakdown. Trying to cause an upset. Four around the net. Now right Penalty for Durham. Tackle and to downfield Kassat who has pinned that one beautifully. Get one. He's a real dynamic player, isn't he? Dan Kassat. Want to watch for this Durham side going forward. Someone's coming. The replacements. 15 minutes. Yeah, you stand there. How many field you? at scrum half for Durham and Five. David Chukwu. Dynamic front row, back row, combo player. We saw him with that superb run earlier on. Yeah, you're fine. Big Mooley. Here's the charge from Durham. What can the Leeds do in defence? Pushing and shoving their way forward and just about inching closer. He's lost Another drive in. coming and it's a penalty first. No, no, no. 22's got to roll first. Taken quickly through the hands. Agreed. Sortel was there in defence. And another penalty coming, another high tackle. And I think the Lees are going to have to be careful here. Another one of them, and they may be down to 14. Referee not reaching for his pocket just yet. Yeah. 
13. Yes. 13. Well, a couple of players down with Knox, so water and medics on. Let's just make sure they're working on our tackles. Nice hit. Just get a nice alone. Yeah, yes, please. Thank you. No, not anymore. Interesting moment of the game around a quarter left. We will have to wait and see how you know, these injuries affect both of these two teams. Uh, the Lees with one more replacement, they've got four on their bench. Durham with only 18. for both teams and captains to have a word and just trying to galvanise their approach. It is so easy to throw away games. You saw in the first of the day when Northampton School for Boys came through, they were 19-0 down, came back to take the win. Patience is something that really 13. pays dividends. Yes to those crunch moments at the end of a game. Almost ready to roll once again. Doctors here this weekend. Okay, just wait, wait for the whistle, please. Ready? Wait for him to tap it, please. Big drive. Good time to do here, are they over? Here the cheers. Yes, they are. Well, look at those celebrations because Durham on top. And this was the charge. The first effort, not quite there from Meek, and it was. Huntley with the second shove. At least not quick enough to react and they had to get low. They didn't quite manage to do that. 12. It's the third try for Durham. Well, after a quiet period, Durham with a lot of pressure in this second half have finally broken the deadlock. He's just pushed that wide and that's why it's so important to chase up to the kicker. Well, Durham lead by five points. This is from the quick tap. It was Kassa with the ball to meet. And there was the Timing. second charge. Yeah, when you're ready, yeah. Tobias Huntley. Wait 
to quit on the charge with Cheng. The Lees. No hands down! In possession. I've been starved of it at times in this That's game. Mr. Bowne looked like he was my tackle there. And replaying the advantage. Yeah, of course, still playing penalty, penalty will come, I'm sure. Alexander over the head look at that for a bounce and maybe <coughs> might fall it doesn't so we are going to go back for the penalty advantage for the high tackle on James Ralston Bow. 14 high tackle on the 10 you okay? And you hear a big kick downfield. Zang. Zakura just taking a knee there. When you're ready. Number four. Where that line is. That's you. How many, please? All in. All in. All. This is you, Durham. Step up. That's Players. you. Just take a step off. Drenched in sunshine after such wet weather. We are. No, once the ball's gone. Momentarily blessed ball. here this weekend. It is a gorgeous all day. Very foggy in Aylesbury this morning, and I'm sure lots of the surrounding area was. Alexander. Russell, who has shone brightly in this Tackle second half. Release. A try of his levelling the scoring temporarily and Sortel on the outside arc past Peterson and he's still going forward. All that looks high. And Sortel still Number going again. here. Thank you. The advantage is coming. <laughs> Just pinned into this corner and now the charge from Roster Bowden. The Leeds get the try. Well, they have done it. They have levelled it. And Roster Bowden will have a chance to convert his own try. And I think that is now his 25th try in 14 games. A real weapon for this Leeds side. you want in line with me. It's a long old distance. All of that pressure, it was the original break around the outside from Ben Sortel. He's wondering whether there might be a card there for Caden Peterson, but I think it's been given. Another high tackle from Durham. They've had a fair few in this game, they need to be careful. James Ralston Bone with a chance here to convert his own try. No. Big strike. And that is a huge, huge strike for James Ralston. Bone, remember the name, the try, the touchline conversion, and the Lees take the lead for the first time in this game. The centre pairing linking up here, and the outside break from Ben Sortel. The Lees on attack once again. We are into the final eight minutes of this match. Big charge, Ivan Usi. Really 
Assist tackle and must release. Russell. You've tapped it, play on. Taking quickly. Looks for options and he's on his own. Well, we're coming back for a penalty, but it looks stay like there, a stay there, stay there, potential stay there. head injury here for Durham. Six. Well, it looks like Will Wood is down for Durham. Maybe a opportune moment for them just to kill the bit of steam out of the lees because they were building up something yeah. nicely in Dan me, Russell. When he goes off, he's he's good, go good. The yellow nine off now. Okay. Do you also let that bench know so they know that's what's going to happen? Thank you. Well, if you just heard what our well, referee said, unfortunately, Will Wood. Six. He's going to get a yellow card, here. so when he goes off for this industry, he will be carded and won't be able to come back on. So Durham will be down to 14 players when this match resumes. I said they had to be careful. So you're aware. There have been a few instances throughout this game where they've got a bit high with the seatbelt tackle. Well, we have six minutes left, as you've just heard, and the yellow card pending will be six minutes as well. So, final couple of adjustments for the teams. on the edge of the pitch talking to their coaching team yeah. in the dugout well, this is um, going to be the yellow anyway for right time. a difficult stoppage reinvigorated words of wisdom Six minutes to go. Durham, number six. From me, please. 17 blue, high tackle. Kick downfield from the penalty for Lees. Austin Bone, who's had a great game. Numbers, how many? All in. Yeah, down yeah, to You'll find that. 14 Durham uh, yellow card for guys give me some more a few more meters uh, Will Thank Wood you. With that injury as well great oh. ball to the top of the line out Cheng was there here comes the drive the extra manpower in the forwards Russell now again goes on his own we've seen that plenty of times today Leave it, 7-7, seven, seven, let it come. Thank you. Ivanusi, who's been a real injection of power throughout this game. Russell just flicking the man behind him. And it's the penalty to Lees. Number seven. Austin Bone on his own. I'm not playing. Big Bosch forward in one arm, charging for the line. Support comes in, the Lees are there, Agreed. ready and waiting. Achimugu darts again. Ripped. Sent backwards. Let and it come, Lees. Durham 
with the turnover. And they get the penalty as well. 22, roll clear. Have a line out, Durham. 25 metres out from their own try line on that far touch line. That's you here. That's you here. Game coming How many? to a close. Need numbers. How many? Where you are. I'm just going to find out. Four. Just four of you, please. So short line out. Durham. There it goes. Jackson has to cut and step, and it was Chukwu in defence for the Leeds who was flying up and stopped the edge, and away he goes. Ray down the right. That was big as well from Kassap. Press. These need numbers in defence. They're a bit short at the moment. Durham still charging. Meek. Release 12. Good ball. A bit high. Perhaps yeah, not. And through the hands. Out wide to Rochester. And into touch. They're coming back for the high tackle. 13 high tackle. Penalty. Back 10, please. For Durham. Now, what On do the they line. do here? Because. Two minutes to go. They're trailing by two points two. with around two minutes to go. And a shot towards to goal would be a sensible option here. We're going sticks. And after a bit of deliberation, where they sounded like they were going to go for the corner, they have opted for the posts. And that is a big call. A smart call. Sure, Dan Kassa has slotted these for fun on the training paddock. He has had a wonderful game today. Struck sweetly, and Durham take the lead once again. 60 seconds on the clock, they are down to 14 men. But it's Durham 22, the Lees 21. Time, got time, Have they got, got anything time. left? Straight down the throat of Rochester. Tackle, release, release 14. And the ball's there to steal for the Lees, and they have done it. And look at Chuck, we all know the penalty given. All right, I've got it, we're fine. 14 clear release. We have time. Well, 30 seconds. It's starting to bubble in these 30 closing stages. There is going to be time for the line out. Yeah, keep coming. Come Jackson. to me. Put Lee's on the edge. To the corner. That's time. So line out to Durham inside. Their own half. Five. That's it. There is still Five, time, but That's it. Fortune Five, will need to favour the Lees here if they can turn Just this five, around please, at this please, late please. stage. Five. It is Durham with Louis Meek, who's been a real Push bulldozer back. for them today. You've got to go back 10, please.
comes the Moore, trying to wind down the clock. A nod from the referee says the time is up, and if they can get it out the back now, it will be done. Taken in by Blue, and that's full time. And that is full time. Durham at the death with the penalty. They're under 18s who are here in the stand and were on the losing side yesterday. Joyous in victory. And that last minute penalty from Dan Kassap, the vice captain. A fantastic performance from him today. Well, it's tough. Very tough for the Lee school. And the Stonex Stadium waits for Durham. A win here at Aylesbury in this Continental Tires Schools Vars semi final and they will challenge for the trophy. And what a way to end the season it would be for them. Huge commiserations to the Lee School. Great bunch of lads that were here in the stand earlier. Had a good time talking with them. But for now, it is Durham that march on, and we will see them in the final. Dan Kassa, the hero, with the penalty 60 seconds from time.
my name's Anne. I'm Lemis. Black Girls Rock is a podcast and a bit of a collective for black women and non-binary people that play rugby. And we set it up during lockdown in 2020. It started just a podcast and then it's kind of grown from that into like a rugby team. We've got like a really big group chat and just like a nice community of black women that play rugby. It's just an incredible movement that is getting a lot of traction and we're just hoping that we can spread the word as best as possible to get as many great black women involved in playing rugby. It was a tough game before though, so don't think you're going into an easy game. They've had time to prep, they're gassed off of a win last weekend. We need to go hard. One, two, three, LFG! It started because rugby wasn't accessible to black women and there were a lot of just prep related issues that we were finding in making the game comfortable for yeah. us. Hair was a big issue for Hair me. Hair was a huge when issue. When I first started, I didn't know what to do with that. I used to have like massive braids. Yeah. And then like, I'd just people be pulling my hair during games. It seems like such a small thing, but it's really hard figuring out what to do with your hair as a black woman playing rugby. It's like, do I have braids? But like, will it get tugged on? Like, if I want to wear a weave, like, how, what's my leave out like? That might not make as any sense to some people, but like, it's just things that we need to th think about. And it's nice to know that I have a community of people that I can just like ask these questions to. Black Girls Rock have played a great contribution to my journey. Um, I think it's really helped me get back into rugby at times. So there's been times where I've been injured and not as motivated to continue. And with having another sisterhood or knowing there's other people similar to you that are also playing, it sort of motivates you to continue. So I think Black Girls Rock was one of my biggest motivators behind continuing playing rugby. I want to get more people involved. I want people to be like, oh, I'm gonna start rugby. Let me reach out to Black Girls Rock. I want us to be a space where we can help people make the right decisions and help people feel self safe and welcome and, and give people the experiences that we have had playing yeah. rugby as much as possible. Yeah. That's the dream. And just kind of put it on the map and yeah. show people that it, it is possible to yeah. be a part of this sport. And it's just it's just created an incredible community um, of women across all abilities as well. Like we have players who are in NC3 and, and players who are playing internationally yeah. um, representing us. It's wild. <laughs> it's, it's really crazy. I think Black Girls Rock is, you know, so, so important um, for the game, um, for inspiring young girls to get into the game, um, to just see somewhere where there's a community of people, you know, who look like you, who sound like you, who you can relate to as a young girl coming into the sport is, is so important. And to have that through Black Girls Rock, not only doing a podcast that you can listen to whenever, but also now doing invitational games, going to events. Um, to have that and for that to be visible, I think it's just, yeah, so important. It's great to hear women that actually go through the same experiences you do and you have that comfort that you belong in the sport, that there are others that know how you feel and what the challenges and barriers you face as well. And it's just kind of a bit of a sisterhood too. You come in knowing that you've got people there always to support and just understand you as well. So it's been great. Our WhatsApp group is a platform, a community space where we share things that are going on. It's a really great platform to share exciting things that are happening for our community. It's also like interesting like when people bring up um, something that's happened to them. Like we've had people that have mentioned that like, oh, I had an issue with a ref and X, XYZ happened, had like a racist incident at, um, during my game. And then it's like partly like the outpouring of love from everyone in support, but also like, a lot of other people coming forward and be like oh my god that's happened to me as well and like i also knew that wasn't okay but like had no one else to talk to and yeah. like that like kind of support system has been like really important to like build that community as well and it's nice to know that in the future if anybody does suffer with some sort of racial attack yeah. that they will feel empowered to sign up for themselves yeah. because they have our support um as There's well 80 people that will come and fight <laughs> for them so yeah i think that's quite yeah, nice that's true. <laughs> It's nice to have like a community you can talk to, people that will understand how that's made you feel. Just having an area where you can actually share, like even your successes in a game. Sometimes after on Sundays um, evenings, we'll have someone share, like this is my first time playing for a team, I scored a try. And you just feel like this like overwhelming like pride just for like this as a group of sisters that not normally feel, feel accepted in rugby, that now have a community that can share and understand like who you are, what it's about and how good it is to be part of it. One of the things that actually drew me to Hackney was Black Girls Rock. 
I just moved to London from Bristol and then I saw that Black Girls Rock was kind of affiliated with Hackney and rugby's always been such a big part of my life so I just thought yeah I want to play for Hackney and I want to be involved in Black Girls Rock definitely. We organised an annual tournament at our club in Hackney and we just thought it'd be nice to have a and we honestly team. thought it was just going to be like maybe seven, ten max interested in playing in the yeah. sevens tournament and when 20 people, 25 yeah. people 25 were interested, people <laughs> were interested which and is we had wild. Like fans coming as well to yeah. watch, um, I think it really brought home to us the importance of what we were doing. Yeah, it was such an amazing day because it was like we played so well, even though like we had never met each other before. Yeah. And it was really nice that like a lot of the girls were like, oh, I just don't want this day to end. Like it was just so yeah. much fun. And like, we, I don't know, just immediately had like something in common. And like, so now like post that, we're really hoping for like a big summer of doing loads of sevens tournaments and um, some friendlies, um, 15s friendlies as well. And like, we've got like 80 people in the group chat, which is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Really looking forward to a summer full of black girl magic. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Definitely inspirational, um, having different levels um, of players that were all black girls. And it was great that even if they weren't playing, they were just there to support. And just having that community was, it was really supportive. It was really great. Just keep getting more black women playing rugby all over England. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the main dream, really. All over like, the world. All over the world, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, getting more kids into rugby. I'd yeah. love to see like, like someone come up like that I've maybe coached or like a black girl that's in the Black Girls Rock group chat in like the World Cup in a couple of years. That'd be yeah. nice. Um, but I don't know. I'm just like I think we just want to keep providing opportunities to people and yeah. like yeah. just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep soaring. Keep flying. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a star in heaven that we can't reach. Okay, okay, we got it. <laughs> Black Girls Rock! Big cat. Did you did you name your animal? Yeah. Is it one animal that you could win in a beat of fight? <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying a full full grown sheep. No, no, no. I'm thinking about a goat with horns. It can't be goat with horns. No. I'm having a. That's a pony answer. So obviously recovery is massive for these boys, but for us all. Uh, they love the sauna, so if we do about 12, 15 minutes in the sauna, then jump in that unheated pool out there, which is about, I was guessing, maybe 10 degrees, uh, in there for a couple of minutes, then for me, I'm back in the sauna before bed. I find if I can do a long enough sauna, it makes me real sleepy and sleep pretty well. So yeah, and I've always had a little bit of a heated pool. Like it's a good chance of voice just have a bit of a natter and I think mean, like a good way to end the day. Like you book end the day is with recovery and helps with your sleep and hopefully you feel a million dollars come tomorrow morning. When you run out onto the pitch with that white shirt on and the red rose and you hear that crowd roar, especially when you're at Twickenham, it makes you feel ten foot tall. Underwood, lovely pick up. First chance for him. 
What a moment for the 20 year old Rory Underwood. My first try against France is one of my favourite tries because it was my first try for England. My third try against Argentina to get my first hat trick. My fifth try against Fiji to get five tries in the game, which is something that's still a joint record. Rory Underwood's fifth try for England. Being England's record try scorer is something I'm very proud of, but I recognise that it wasn't just because of me. I can only score those tries if the rest of the team do what they can do as individuals, but as collective as a team. My rugby journey in some way started at school. The first person who had a real influence on in my career was John Oates, who was the PE teacher, who made that first suggestion. He was a very big friend after I left school and was always somebody I could go to and, and mentor in my early stages of playing rugby. first came across Rory, it must have been the late 70s, early 80s, when I joined the school looking after the sport. First impression is, uh, wow, he's quick, wow, he's balanced, wow, he can catch the ball and wow, nobody can catch him. What a character, what a player. Three main things that stuck out about him. First of all, the strength of the family, a really strong family bond. Mum from Kuala Lumpur, father from Middlesbrough, very humble, very articulate and very hardworking. Secondly, the character. Now the school here is based upon building characters, and Rory is one of them. And the third thing was his absolute fantastic physical ability. During his time with England, some of the British athletics people tested him and came back as one of the people who could have really made it as a decathlete. So what a fantastic athlete he was. As time went on, you could see the development of him into a team player, but also somebody who could devastate, beat defences. He could score tries from anywhere. An incredible athlete. What a brace of tries by the flying officer. Sometimes one of the things that surprises me about my whole career of playing rugby is that during the whole of my career, it was an amateur game. So during that period, I was playing at Twickenham. I've got my 85 caps for England. I was doing that as an amateur and I had a day job. And there's still people that didn't realize that I was a pilot in the Royal Air Force. And so I flew 20 of those Canberra's and Hawks during my time. I was in the Air Force for 18 years during the whole of my rugby career. Singing the national anthem at Twickenham before the game, the emotions were obviously high. You know, when you run out of the tunnel, you go up the, the two, three steps onto the turf at Twickenham as it was in those days, and you emerge and the, the crowd goes up. It's one of the best things I've done in my life. Wherever I go in the world, people are always ask me, how's my mum? Obviously, she was picked out in the stand at Twickenham virtually every time by grandstand, seeing her two boys running around on the pitch at Twickenham. She was immensely proud mum. But for myself and Tony, it was like us playing on the garden back at home. We were just playing together in the same team. To be able to run out at Twickenham with a white shirt on the red rose together as brothers was, was a fantastic experience. Rory Underwood got piled through and scores. Without a doubt, rugby has made me into the man I am now. You can go to any rugby club around the world and you just say you play rugby and they will welcome you with open arms. We are very proud of what rugby is all about, what it means all around the world, whoever you are. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody who wants to get involved in the game of rugby, please dive in wholeheartedly because you will get more out of it. Underwater. My wildest dreams were running around and playing rugby with mates. Did I ever think that I would play in uh, three World Cups, be leading try scorer, have 85 caps? No, not in my wildest dreams. When I started playing for England, it was a white shirt, nothing else, but the number and the red rose. So it's had its purest. And being able to play for England 85 times has been an absolute honour and uh, one I remember forever.
Well, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to the Continental Tires Schools Cup. We've got the second Continental Tires Schools Cup semi-final coming up for you. The winner of this, Millfield against Radley, will play Northampton School for Boys at the Stone X Stadium, the home of Saracens in around nine days time. We've had seven games over the two days so far. Three games earlier on today where Beaching Cliff beat St Albans, Northampton School for Boys beat Stowe and Durham just beat the Lees. We've got this one coming up, Millfield against Radley. Let's take a look at the teams. For Millfield, plenty of Bath Academy boys littered throughout this lineup. Magnus Watson, that prop one to watch as well as Harry Wilson on the wing. 
I've been told he can run the 100 metres in 11.1 seconds. So a speedster, I'm sure if he gets the ball in space, he'll be a hard man to stop. And the Radley College side, not shy of a good player or two. Captain Hamish Kennedy at 12, strong ball carrier. Good distribution as well. And Freddie Hunt at nine, I've been told, gets his team going. Should be quite the cracker to end the weekend here today at Aylesbury Rugby Club. Replacements on both sides too. Millfield fielding a stronger branch. Five versus two. How will that affect this game? Millfield, the school from Somerset, played 21 this year, won 15, lost six. Quarter-final win against Whitgift, 33-19 at home. And Bradley College, based in Oxfordshire, are unbeaten so far this season. And they've taken down some giants on their route to the final. St Paul's, Tunbridge, Abingdon, Harrow, Aundel and Hampton away. Well, here we go then, the second cup semi-final of the Continental Tire Schools Cup between Millfield School and Radley College. Manny Lumsden ready to get us underway for Radley College in the red and white. Kicks it long into the 22, caught well by Fred Hay of Millfield. Good, powerful leg drive by Hay, taking his side up past the 22 metre line. Taylor Ross to put it back into the pocket for Pierre and Moran. Well taken by Andrew Coke, passing it off to Lumsden, tries to sidestep, taken down well. Hunt out the back to McNeil, still going over the halfway line now. Hunt taken well behind him by Coke. Hunt, decoy runner is Oliver, but it's deemed as crossing, it'll be a penalty to Millfield. And Moran getting his hands on this to punt the ball into the Radley College half. But he's not made the touch and Lumsden has a chance to take it up. Penalty again to Millfield. Working their way up the pitch. And again, Moran sends it up the field. Good platform now for the school from Somerset to launch an attack. Fred Hay to throw in. Fred Hay, who's comes from family of farmers chicken and beef I've been told Watch him. hey to throw in caught well Ball. by Flamingi one, one off. And here comes the rolling ball earlier on the St Albans game against Beach and Cliff we saw that utilized well but not here it's been stopped by Radley College but carried forward by Barrett and that's Taylor Ross spinning it out to Wilson Wilson still going making meters across the pitch is Wilson Taylor Ross to Flamingi Taylor Ross Moran Barrett out as far as Hughes. Still going in Millfield. Just five metres out now, Taylor Ross. Good carry there. Nearly all the way. Is he all the way? Yes, he is. The first score of the day. 
goes to midfield. And it's their big number one, Ruben Valdega. Good hard line. Crashing over to get the first score of the game. Good passage of play that by Millfield. Taylor Ross at nine conducting his team well. And how about this for a curry? Bushing his way over the line. And Moran with the chance to add the extras. Which he does. 7 0 is the score for Millfield against Radley College. Good defence by Radley College at the start, but not enough to stop the cruising Magnus Watson. Bath Academy boy is Watson. As half this Millfield team is. Taylor Ross back in the pocket to Moran. He pumps it up the field. Lumsden's back there though. But it's going to be a penalty. No advantage coming. Two white side entry. Punted upfield by Moran. Hate to throw in again, just over the halfway line here, Millfield. Tempted to be tapped back by Stubbings. But it's a good, strong carry by Hamish Hendry. Penalty, though, to Radley. Lumsden to send the ball downfield and he's not made touch either Taylor Ross can send it back with interest only as far as Andrew Coke back to Lumsden second bite what a kick that could be sends it deep into the millfield 22 Taylor Ross sends it back and the kick tennis is over be a line out for Radley College. Radley College's record this year is very impressive. I mean, they've beaten quite a few of the big names in the schoolboy unit. St. Paul's, Tunbridge, Bedford, Abingdon, Harrow, Aundel. They've also defeated Cheltenham College and Wellington College. But there's one more obstacle in their way before reaching the final at the Stone X and that is Millfield. Just a reminder, the winner of these two sides plays Northampton School for Boys in the final. Northampton School for Boys coming from behind to beat Stowe School in the first match of this Sunday. Kennedy, the captain, crashing it up. Hunt. Good carry there by Tilly Keanu. Offloaded to Coke. Lumsden spins it out all the way to the wing as McNeil. Good, strong tackle, taking McNeil nearly into touch, but he spilled the ball forward. Great tackle there by Barrington Hibbert of Millfield driving William McNeil into touch. 
Let them take the voice. It's uncontested. Right step. Ball's not left the line now. We can't, we can't overturn it. Here come Millfield. Good crash uh, by Barrington Hibbert, the captain. Also another Bath Academy player and also England touch. Punted downfield by Moran. Only as far as Andrew Coke. Andrew Coke enjoying being in the backfield so far, the number seven for Radley. Good little pop out the back there from Oliver to Casey. Hunt. Penalty coming for Radley. Quite a nice position. Potential for some three points. Coming back now. Let's see what Radley College decide to do. 12 and 6, high tackle. Well, Manny Lumsden, number 15, aiming to go into the corner here to give Bradley an opportunity to score. Sliced a bit off the boot, not as deep as Bradley College would have wanted, but still a nice position to launch an attack. And it'll be James Coke to throw in. Tilly Okano takes. And it's off straight to out James Coke, who's still going as Coke. Good drive there by Radley College. Hunt. Come back for the penalty. Another high tackle. And it'll be the corner again for Radley College. Very dangerous position for Millfield to be in here. Radley College looking to get their first points on the board in this game. Coke to throw in. Taken again by Best this time. And here comes the ball. A bit scrappy, but still going a Radley. Still pushing. And it's a try. Radley College are over. And it's one try apiece in this game so far. Well, the rolling ball has been the story of the day here. We've seen so many of them. But here, Randy College's mall stops well by Millfield, but it's the peel which Millfield were not expecting. And Alessandro. Carpigo for Radley College bundles his way over for the first try of the game for Radley College. And Manny Lumsden looking to add the extras now. Which he does. Seven apiece for the second Continental Tires Schools Cup semi final. Winner of this playing Northampton School for Boys at Stone X. It's nine days' time. Well, as we can see here, the mall stopped well by Millfield, but Carpigo peeling off and powering his way over the line. And we're back underway here. As Millfield send the ball deep into Radley College's half. Hunt. Out the back. 
Manny Lumsden all the way over to McNeil. Bit of a hospital pass there, but he's still going as McNeil outside the 22 now. But it's been spilled. Millfield with the ball now, Joe Barrett. Taylor Ross out to Ball Degger. Taylor Ross again. Thank you. Oh, and it's just spilled forward from the hands of Joe Reed. And Bradley come away with the ball. Good offload there. Still going now. Andrew Coke. Back, back. Carpigo. Still going is Carpigo. Good carry, making it around 10 metres there, Carpigo. Hunt. But it's been spilled again, and now the try scorer for Millfield, Magnus Watson, carries the ball into contact. Taylor Ross back to Moran. Moran sees a little half gap, tries to dart through it, taken down though. That's fine, we've got no advantage. We're coming back for the scrum advantage. And our first scrum of the game, a little break in play. We've had plenty of ex-professionals down today and current. A couple of the England boys were here to support the last game. Theo Dan, Tommy Freeman, Charlie Yules, James Haskell's been down. Serge Betson is in the crowd now watching Radley against Millfield. Kieran Bracken down earlier today to watch his son and Tom Wood. Good covering tackle that was by Radley College's 12 and captain Amish Kennedy. But Millfield still with momentum. No release. By players, no release. And they've got a penalty. Post court. Post court. Opting for the post. I need a clear release. Quite post. some way out this for an under 15 boys game, but Piran Moran obviously backs himself from this range. strike has it got the legs no it doesn't he's just pulled it had the distance though Kieran Moran seven all still the court score Millfield a school that's produced many a professional rugby player over the years Adam Hastings Hugh Jones Jonathan Joseph ex-England captain Chris Robshaw and Mako Vinopolo all went to this school in Somerset. <laughs> Additionally, Lily Allen went to Millfield, Lando Norris, F1 driver, and Tyro Mings, Aston Villa footballer, have produced quite a lot of talent. Bradley College using that roll and rolling ball again to great effect and that's gone about 15 metres and with the penalty advantage Freddie Hunt trying to dig it through Casey tries to go himself in the scrum cap the fly half Hunt digging it out again passing it off to Oliver and there's a gap now 
Cook going through, trying to get the offload off. Back to the line. Back to the line. Eleven, high tackle. Bit of deja vu here for Radley College in this position ten minutes ago and they came away with a try. Can they do the same here? James Coke to throw in again. Can Cartigo peel off and score another try to extend the score and put Radley College into the, the lead. Oscar Vest taking it. And here comes that rolling ball again. Freddie Hunt at the back, urging his boys forward. But it's been sacked there by Millfield well. Radley will have to reset. That is Carpigo driving it forward. And it's another drive by Millfield's pack. Inches out now at Radley College as they're urging, pushing for the line. And it's a try. And it's Carpigo again. His second try of the game. Great resilience and strength that from the Radley College forward pack. Picking and going on multiple occasions. Brilliant patience from the Oxfordshire School. And they go over for their second try of the Continental Tire Schools Cup semi-final. Now Manny Lam Lumsden, can he make it two out of two? Good strike, straight through. Another successful conversion from Manny Lumsden. 14 7 up. Well, it's been the battle of the forwards so far, has been the story of this game. Both sets of wingers, probably quite cold on the sidelines of Aylesbury Rugby Pitch as it stands. Good tackle that by Danny Billage for Millfield. And that's Edward Casey trying a little chip, but straight into the hands of Teddy Woodbridge. Woodbridge streaking his way through. Here goes Woodbridge. Can he go all the way? Tackle just short. Taylor Ross at the base, but it's been picked up by Flamingi. Taylor Ross passing out and it's the try scorer Watson Watson bushing his way through Taylor Ross to Moran Moran trying to go himself looking for the offload it's not there picking and go from Hendry they're looking for the next pick and go and it is Flamingi And another one, dummy. Still short. It was George Copas that time. Taylor Ross digging it out. Oh, it's been lost forward. Fantastic defence that by Radley College. Millfield trying to emulate what Radley College had done five minutes ago at their try line, picking and going, trying to push their way over to score. But it was lost forward, inches away from the line by Millfield. And it'll be a scrum down, Radley College ball. Crouch! Bind! Freddie Hunt to put it. Good shove by Millfield. 
but it's Harry Oliver who comes away with it. And a great carry that was by the eight, relieving the pressure on Radley College. And here comes Coke again. James Coke. Wilfred Hall. Good tackle by Joe Reed of Millfield. Hunt to Casey. Hunt, Casey. Carpigo. Still going, Carpigo. Pumping the legs, getting over the 10 metre line. Hunt. Out the back to Casey, popped up to the big number five, Tula Keanu. Hunt to Coke. Creeping forward, our Radley College. Good momentum. Oh, but unfortunately spilled by the big man, Tulia Keanu. And Millfield have the scrum advantage and the ball back. Taylor Ross over to Baldega. And they've got numbers out on the right here. If they can use them. Oh, Moran ops for the chip. Over to Woodbridge, gathered by Woodbridge. Still going is Woodbridge. Great bit of play that, Moran to Woodbridge. And it's a penalty to Millfield. Roll away. If you're on the wrong side, you need to get out of there. Well, Teddy Woodbridge, the winger of Millfield, hasn't seen too much of the ball. But he can run the 100 metres in 11.4 seconds. The other winger, Harry Wilson, 11.1 seconds. So they've got two speedsters on the wing, but it's been a game of the forwards so far so we haven't seen too much four, four called, let them reset. Of either of the four millfield called, wingers so fred hay to throw in five end. meters out thank you yeah line's yours hold and it's a three-man line out flamingly the man jumping up there he is flamingly pops back to taylor ross and it's Hughes, the number eight, crashing it up. Taylor Ross spinning out to Moran. And here, there must be a score. And there is Aston Barrington Hibbert, the captain, walking in. And Millfield made that look so easy. Well, Aston Barrington Hibbert is an England touch player as well as a Bath Academy. But if we look again, it's crashed up by number eight, Caden Hughes, and then Taylor Ross spinning it out to Moran, who gives it to Barrett, who passes it to Aston Barrington Hibbert, and he just waltzes it in, touches it down for Millfield's second try of the game. And can Moran add the two points to level this match? Yes, he can. What a strike that was from Peran Moran. Scores a level here now, and this is an evenly matched contest. As of all the games today being, I think every game separated by maximum three points. It's been a real exhilarating day of rugby. Continental Tire Schools Cup semi-finals here at Aylesbury Rugby Club. It's not over yet as the first half of the second Schools Cup semi-final comes to a close. It's level here, Millfield 14, Radley College 14. It's a bit of a wayward pass by Taylor Ross, putting Moran in a bit of trouble, but Moran's trying to jink his way out of trouble, stepping and dodging and darting. Does well, the fly half. Here comes Flamingi, fluent in three languages and also a Bath Academy player as well. Moran to punt the ball upfield as far as Coke, but the bounce favours Millfield. And there'll be a line out just at the halfway line for Radley College. Now, Radley College themselves boast some notable alumni Andrew Strauss, ex England cricket captain as well as 
current England tight head prop, Will Stewart. James Coke to throw in from this line out. And he hits Oscar Best. Coke carrying it into contact just over the halfway line now as Hunt passes it to Carpigo and Carpigo pushing into the Millfield players. And here comes Oliver. Running like a man possessed is Oliver Hunt. Great carry there by Tulikiano. And here comes the momentum from Radley College. And here comes the numbers as well. Shipping it out to the wing to McNeil. He tries to go around the outside, but it's been spilt forward there by Max Murray. And it'll be a scrum down Millfield ball. Time's off. I just need a clear because I can't even just leaning on the ball. I need to make a clear effort to clear. That one. Happy? Time on. Last couple of minutes of the first half of second semi-final of the Continental Ties Schools Cup. A reminder, whichever side wins this progresses through to play Northampton School for Boys at the Stonex Stadium. Nine days time. We'll take our time to set up. Let's go now. Seconds in, please. Crouch. Bind. Captain Hamish Kennedy Set. standing at first receiver here with here now. Edward Casey, the fly half, just behind him. But it's been picked up by Oliver and it's going out the back to Casey. Looks for the offload, but it's been fumbled and Millfield can come away with it here. And here comes the speedster, Harry Wilson, popping it off to Louis Lawrence. And Louis Lawrence over the halfway line now, tries to chuck the ball back, but... Advantage and penalty given, and it's been taken quickly there by Aston Barrington Hibbert. Millfield building up a bit of steam now. George Kopas. Taylor Ross. Good counter ruck. Taylor Ross to Moran. To Billage. Moran over to Reed. Reed going, the second row still going is Reed. Still going is Reed. No one could seem to get the big man down. Taylor Ross over to Kopas. Big hit there coming in on Kopas, but it's a penalty. Well, Joe Reed there, the second row for Millfield. What a. Captain. Captain. Captain's being called in now. Well, that is Tulia Keanu being yellow carded. Millfield coming away with it. Set piece move here by the school from Somerset. And are they over? Well, and that was Caden Hughes crashing over the number eight, but it's been held up, and that's no try and half time. And Radley College will be delighted that they've got away with the pressure there. But they're a man down for the next six minutes going into the start of the second half, and it's 14 all here between Millfield and Radley in the second Continental Tires Schools Cup semi-final.
The Welsh I the Welsh, I went to the Welsh guy. Yeah, I did. 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 Well, here we go then. Second half and the last half of rugby of this Continental Tire Schools Cup weekend. Which of these two sides will progress to the final at the Stone X Stadium, the home of Saracens, to face Northampton School for Boys? Nothing separating the two sides at the half, 14 points each, two converted tries. Built forward there, early mistake by Hamish Kennedy, the captain. But it'll be a penalty, and Hamish Kennedy takes it quickly. 
pulled back by the referee. Back chat there by Captain Aston Barrington Hibbert. Core values, 13. 13 in his head. Brilliant refereeing there. Manny Lumsden to send it downfield. Just in front of our commentary position here at Aylesby Rugby Club. James Coke to throw in. He hasn't missed one today. His darts have been 100%. Coke to best. Mall started here. Sacks legal. Still going is the Mall. Good power from the Radley College boys. And Hunt is fizzing it out to Hamish Kennedy out the back door to Casey. Miss pass. Montgomery Cooper. The man who couldn't quite grasp the ball. And it's been lost forward by Cooper as well. And Millfield will have a scrum on the halfway line. Well, Millfield, a school known for its rugby, but surprisingly, they've only won once the under-15s Continental Tire Schools Cup in 2009. Eight. 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 But as I said in the first half, have produced Crouch. many a great player, Adam Hastings, Scotland international. Mind. Hugh Jones, Scotland international, and Set. Jonathan Joseph, Chris Robshaw, and Mako Vinopola, all England internationals. And here they come again, midfield, but it's a loose pass, and can Hamish Kennedy, the captain of Bradley, pouncing it nearly. Milford have done well to gather that again. And it's Taylor Ross passing it over to Caden Hughes. Big carry from the eight, but it's a high tackle. Advantage coming. Copas. And there's from Inji. Advantage. We'll come back for the advantage of the high tackle though. Moran. Number one, high tackle. To gain Millfield a bit of distance by putting the ball downfield, and he does so well. With a replacement hooker, Billage to throw in. One nine is dropped. We got we called for. No doubt, yep, Flamingni will dropped. be the target here. Yeah, your four. Yeah, your one. See the channel. In the channel. Let's go now. And there he is, Flamingi to catch the ball, popping it off the back to Copas. Over to Hughes, Bath Academy player Hughes driving forward. Copas. And it's a brilliant counter ruck there by Bradley College as they regain possession. And that's Hunt to Coke. Great carry by Coke. May not be the biggest, but carries hard into contact. It's Casey fizzing it out to Murray. Over to McNeil. Copas to feed in here. Fine. Only a few seconds left for Mill Hill to capitalise on having the extra Set. man. Oh, no, what? Ooh, it's a high tackle there as Casey still carrying the ball in two hands. Nice little offload to Kennedy. Coke. 
picks up the ball. Coke still going with the ball. Kennedy picks and goes, does the captain. Hunt at the base, passing off to Coke. Coke has been carrying so hard all game. And he's still going. So there's Casey putting boot to ball, crossfield kick. McNeil chasing after this, bouncing down, and Lumsden's on it. Manny Lumsden. Hunt fizzing it to Coke. Hit back is Coke though. Hunt going down the blind side to Lumsden. Just stalling a bit in their momentum on Mill Hill, but a good carry there by Carpigo, gaining them some much needed metres. As they're into the midfield, 22 now. What can they do? Hunt. Oh, it's lost again. By Radley. And the big man, Tulikiano, is back on the field. 15 men apiece now on the pitch. And a little break in play now as one of the Radley College boys has managed to lose a sock and a boot. And as the sun sets here at Aylesbury Rugby Club, we yeah. wait on one more team to enter the finals at Stone X. And it was William Jordan Willis who is coming back, jogging over to the scrum. Not sure how he lost a boot and a sock in that last passage of play. But he's back, booted and socked up now, ready for a scrum. Crouch. Copas to put the ball in. Set. Oh, and it's been hooked back by Radley College and Ragley turn over the ball in the scrum. Hamish Kennedy to Casey and it's been slapped down. Advantage coming to Radley College as Casey moves the ball forward. And we'll come back for the penalty advantage after it's a deliberate knock on one handed. And what do Radley College here do here? Do they go for the points or are they going to try and extend their lead even further? by going for the corner. Manny Lumsden, the ball in hand, looking like he's going to put the ball into the corner. They're backing themselves, are Radley. Well, here we go then. Could we be seeing the fifth try of the game, the third Radley try? We know how good they've been with their rolling moves in the first half. Alessandro Carpigo scoring two tries off the back of them. Coke to throw in now for Radley College. Oscar Best, the target. And it is Best who takes it. Ball coming down. Big shove now coming from Radley. Driving to the line. Are oh, they driving all the way to the final? been sacked just before the line so here they come the Radley College boys wrestling with the Millfield team for the line and it's a sea of bodies on that far side of the pitch Hunt digging it out Hamish Kennedy the receiver tries to go himself does Kennedy penalty advantage coming for Radley They've gone for the pick and go again. 
another pick and go coming. Radley are trying to bulldoze their way over the line. Hunt wanting it now, calling for it at the base, the nine. And they've been sacked, but it's an advantage. Penalty coming for the offside. Hamish Kennedy taking it quickly, going for the line himself. Inches out now at Radley College, but this side they're over. And it is the hooker, James Coe. Well, after being stopped multiple times there, eventually the hooker, James Coke, pushes his way over the line. Quick thinking from Captain Hamish Kennedy. Got them just before the posts. And hooker James Coke with a quick thinking. And Manny Lumsum has added the extras too. Taking Radley College, a converted try in front in the Continental Tires Schools Cup semi-final number two. It's Radley College 21, Millfield 14. But with 20 minutes to go in this semi-final still, there's all to play for. As Piran Moran gets his back underway. But the big man's there, Tulikiano, back on the field after Sid bidding in the first half. Coke, the try scorer, Hunt, good strength there shown by Radley, Hunt to Carpigo to Casey and it's been spilt forward and Millfield come away with it now, George Kopas, Flamingi to Moran, who tries the basketball pass it over and it's to Keanu who picks it up, but will come back for the knock forward. And Moran breathes a big sigh of relief there as, I mean, Radley College had a lot of numbers over on that far left side if they'd been able to exploit that space. Surely would have been a fourth try. Well, Millfield have lost six games this season so far. They're under 15 side. Whereas Radley College, the side in the lead at the moment, are unbeaten. Could they keep it that way? Big scrum here from both sides, but it's picked up eventually by Hughes, Bath Academy boy. And here comes Hamish Kennedy away. No, it's going to be a penalty. And Moran punts it down, but it looks like he's missed touch there, and Lumsden's underneath that, calling the mark. Oh, but a bit of confusion there. Tackle now. Referee not hearing the mark, so Lumsden has to play on. Coke. Good carry by Coke there. Driving in between two defensive players. That's taken back in nine. Back foot. Box by Hunt there. Copas underneath it. Carries it well. And the atmosphere here by the Millfield boys is going well. Shouting their lungs out in this stand at Aylesbury Rugby Club. And feet now, feet now, thank you. Copas to spin it out to Moran. Out to Barrett. Barrett to Hughes there. And it's a penalty coming for Millfield. Number eight, off feet. Barrington Hibbert. Well, Harry Oliver, it was penalised for diving off his feet in the ruck. Giving Millfield a bit of time to set up an attack. Set-piece move from the line-out. James Coke. One, one of you a hooker, one needs to be a hooker, one's out. 
With well, a replacement ten. hooker, Thank you. Danny Billage it is to throw step, in. Wide step. Looking across. Throwing to Olswiski, to Moran, to Barrington Hibbert. Barrington Hibbert over to the full back, Louis Lawrence. And the ball's spilled out. And Radley College now come away with the ball. Just trying to force it. Too many offloads, too many knock ons. And now Millfield have the ball back. And Copas trying to dig out the ball, the replacement nine to Moran. Out the back, and it's a cross field kick. Successful to Bryken James. James trying the basketball pass. And Millfield still with the ball. Great carry there by Xavier Jones. Copas to the replacement hooker, Billage. Out the back, still going. But spilled by Barrington Hibbert, and it's been hacked down. And Moran is after this, but so are a lot of the Radley College boys. And it's Carpigo, the two time try scorer, who comes away with it. Hunt over to Montague Cooper. Hunt to Carpigo. Good carry there by Carpigo, hard. Penalty Millfield. And there's just no breathing space in this game. And it's been taken quickly again by Barrington Hibbert. And he's making metres now as the captain for Millfield. Bath Academy player too. Bit of miscommunication there. Magnus Watson spills the ball backwards. And he's hit backwards too by Radley. Copas is becoming increasingly scrappy this game and unforced errors and drop balls and this scrum a good time for a bit of breathing space Scrum down. Radley College ball. Crouch. Find. As the sun comes down here at Aylesbury, Freddie Hunt to put the ball in to Radley College's scrum, which has been oh, by no, far the strongest so far in this game. And it's picked out by Harry Oliver and popped to the ha captain, Hamish Kennedy. And that's Wilfred Hall driving forward. And that's Hunt now passing the ball off to Carpigo. What a game he's had so far. But that's Tulikiano who's dropped the ball backwards, but they're still coming now. Cope just trying to force the offloads both sides. How many times have we seen the ball spilled to the floor now? Moran driving forward, popping it off to his 12. Barrett. Good step there by Bryken James. Coates over the ball. But it's an advantage, it's deemed as illegal. Moran, lovely out the back pass by Pierre Moran. Pops it up to Fred Hay. Gets tackled backwards, but we're going to come back for the advantage. Number two, off feet. Elbows on the ground. Just seems both sides are trying to force the play in this game so many offloads which aren't sticking to hand and are being spilt but a good kick up field there by Pierre and Moran giving a side a good platform on which to attack and try and get them back in this game as we approach the final 10 minutes one more drop, one more drop. And it's a four man line out for Millfield. Millfield, here we go. Step up. Thank you. Olsweski, the target. 
And there he is there. Catch back to Kopas, who spins it out to the big number eight, Caden Hughes. And that's Hughes there. Hit back, though, by Radley College. Kopas to Moran. Going nowhere is Moran, and he's spilt it forward now. Radley College in possession. And here comes William Jordan Willis. A big prop. Hamish Kennedy, the captain. They've got numbers now, if they can use them all the way to William McNeil. William McNeil, and that's high, but it's advantage coming. Coke, flatlined by the hooker. Back to Hunt. And here comes Carpigo. Carpigo bursting through. And Randy College. Into the 22, but no advantage. We're going back, and there's another yellow card. This time for Millfield. Coming back for the high tackle. Manny Lumsden to make some ground. And that's a great kick from the fullback of Randy College. You can see how this side has beaten so many schoolboy rugby giants like St Paul's and Tunbridge and Abingdon and Harrow. A strong outfit, just missing that final touch to extend their lead and get them closer to the Continental Tire Schools Cup final at the Stonex Stadium. That's, the, that's Oscar Best taking the ball in the air and this is Coke coming forward. Both the Coke brothers have loved it today. Ball in hand, carrying hard. And that's Carpigo, another man who's loved getting the physical contact today. And that's a pop-off to Tuli Keanu. Inches out, Coke going for the line for his second try of the game. Stripped, leave it. Hit back. Stripped by Millfield. Moran trying to kick it out, does well to engineer a bit of space for himself and what a clearance kick that is given the circumstances huge amount of pressure on the Millfield 10 there well, Millfield were given a penalty in the end for offside and Moran's given the opportunity to clear it, but it'll be a Millfield throw in this time. And as we approach the final stages of the second Continental Tire Schools Cup semi-final, Millfield need to get a score on the board. Good throw in that by Fred Hay. Moran shipping it off to Barrett. And it's been stripped. Radley College with the ball this time. Can they extend their lead? Good hands by Carpigo. Hunt to Jordan Willis. Hunt again. Chipped over by Casey. Who's going to get it? It's Coke who's got it. Hunt. Numbers on the right now. Casey. Carpigo. Backwards. All backwards. And feet backwards. Hunt to Luciano. Hunt. Jordan Willis to Casey. To Manny Lumsden. Still going is Lumsden. Come back for the penalty advantage for a late tackle. And we know how dangerous Mill, uh, sorry, Radley College's set pieces have been, especially their rolling mole. Two tries in the first half off the back of it. 
post court. Ooh, but they've opted for the posts. Which it is probably a sensible decision given the timing of the match. If they can add an extra three points, it means there's no way back for Millfield via a converted try. Manny Lumsden to add the extras. And it's straight through the middle. What a strike that is from Lumsden. Extending Bradley College's lead by an extra three points, making it 24-14. And is that the kick which gets Radley College to the Stonex Stadium on the 12th of March? Back underway here and great tackle that by Millfield. They're not losing spirit. And here comes Larpigo. Hunt. To Casey. Puts boot to ball, crossfield kick. And it's been lost forward. McNeil looking to gather it. It's a scrum advantage there and nothing coming of it. Yeah, if the ball's ahead by the time you set the scrum, I will. Let's go, please. Let's win this back. There we go. Seven Bath Academy boys in the Millfield side. Crouch. Find. Can any of those Set. make a difference now? Oh, right. Sense right. this is one of Millfield's last chances. The ball is fizzed around and it'll be a free kick. Scrum called again. Time ticking away for Millfield. But now, 15 men on the field hold, for them. Hold, okay? No longer a man Touch. down after Bryken James Five. was simbined for a high tackle. Set. Copas to feed. Copas to Moran. Moran offloading to Copas to Bryken James. Here comes Caden Hughes, Copas. Offloaded to Barrett. Barrett back and field to Lewington, Barrington Hibbert. Oh, and what is that by Moran? He's tried to go for the clever through the legs, but to no one. Unfortunately, little mistakes like that have been the story of Millfield's game. Need to be more clinical, especially in the last few minutes of this game. James Coke to throw in. Coke to best. Captain Hamish Kennedy wanted that on a hard line from 12. Hunt to Larpigo, carried forward, juggling in the air, but it's gone backwards. Is the call. Boldega comes away with it. Hunt to Kennedy. Stabbed through, but it's deflected. Picked up, though, by their big number eight, who's still going. Can he go all the way? No. Harry Oliver, that was. Who the ball ricocheted back to and managed to charge down the try line and it's been taken the line out by Milford. No, referee not having any of that. Well, here we go now. Last couple of minutes, last chance for Millfield. 
as Fred Hay tries good set piece that is to Moran to Barrett Barrett's been one of the shining stars for Millfield crashing it up in the midfield all day Six roll away. But Radley College's defence has been good but it's been taken quickly this penalty here by Barrington Hibbert the captain opting to keep ball in hand despite being deep into their own half Caden Hughes relentless but they've got numbers now Magnus Watson here comes Watson the big prop striding forward goes Watson penalty as well Pass taking it quickly again. Bryke and James. Here goes James. Leave it white. White. Another penalty. Captain. Card maybe Captain. coming to. Barrett taking over kicking duties. And this really is Millfield's last chance. Solid line up there to Copas, to Moran. To Barrett, back to Moran, over to Wilson, Wilson, offloading it off to Woodbridge, back to Wilson. And that is it, full time in the Continental Tire Schools Cup semi-final number two, Millfield 14, Radley College 24, Radley College will progress into the final against Northampton School for Boys at the Stone X Stadium, home of the Saracens on the 12th of March. Well, what a day we've had today. The first of the Continental Tire Schools Cup semi-finals between Northampton School for Boys and Stowe. Northampton coming out victorious in that game and then after that, we had the first of the Vars semi-finals, Beeching Cliff defeating St Albans before Durham defeated the Lees School. They'll be playing at the Stonex Stadium. And finally, the game we've just witnessed, Radley College defeating Millfield by 24 points to 14. Well, thank you very much for joining us in the Continental Tyres Schools Cup semi-finals, the under-15s today and the under-18s yesterday. We look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.